Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 38 of my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. I can't believe we're already into episode 38. It seems like I just started this the other day. Uh, tonight, we have a very special show, someone that's uh, pretty near and uh, dear to my heart. I've known this person since I was literally a kid. I don't know how, how old, probably I met her when I was eight or nine years old. And then when I was a teenager, she kind of took me under her wing and let me go to some shows with her and stuff. And then even in my 20s and my 30s, I showed for her, showed some babies and different POAs. And then, of course, we have the kiddo tough connection. So if you haven't figured it out yet, I've been advertising it. Uh, pretty steady all week. It is Jackie Guthrie and, of course, the JBJ's POAs. So Jackie's going to join us a little later. Uh, Tammy Verzi's about ready to join us in a, about a minute or two. And uh, we have a, almost 200 pictures to get through tonight, so it's going to be a long show. If you can't make it all live, just watch it again tomorrow or whenever. It'll be on Facebook forever. So uh, like I say, Jackie started out in the 70s and is still breeding today. Uh, we're going to discuss basically the POA she raised and owned. We're not going to get into political stuff or stuff like that, although Jackie was a big uh, leader in, uh, on the board of directors and a president of the board for many years. And of course, even when she was younger and first getting in POAs, she was an early uh, director on the board. So, But again, tonight we're going to talk about the JBJs. And uh, I know some of these you're going to know really well, some you might not know at all. Hopefully we have some rare photos and stuff like that. So uh, I'm going to get to the screen now, and I'm going to bring on my first guest. Tammy, how are you doing tonight? I'm fine, Ken. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So I always put people on the spot a little bit, but I won't too much. But uh, we oh, didn't thank you. Well, we didn't uh, interview for this or anything. So, uh, But I will say just uh, how long have you known Jackie? Oh, I've known Jackie probably since uh, about the late 80s. Mm -hmm. I was uh, the show manager in Des Moines, uh, the two internationals, and I believe 87 and 88, and Jackie was the show chairman. Okay. So we worked together quite um, closely there in Des Moines and, right. and have known, been good friends with her ever since. Right. Well, you worked in the office for a while, right? Right. I worked up to uh, April of 87, and when I came back to Iowa, then I was hired to do those two shows out in Des Moines. Okay. That's cool because you had a connection there. You're an Iowa yeah. State girl, right? Iowa? At Absolutely, right. go you, Cyclones. You played, uh, so you're a pretty good softball player, right? Yes, uh, not to brag, Kent, but God <laughs> didn't give me many talents, but he let me throw a softball there. Well, well sure. that's good, good. I wish I could see some old uh, video of that, but I don't want to pick on you, but I don't know if I have a 16 millimeter or whatever, so, or 8 <laughs> oh, millimeter. Oh, I'm kidding, yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, it's, it's been a while, that's for it's sure. Been, I know when I used to watch my brother's uh years later because they were eight and 11 years older than me i'd have to literally get a reel because they played in the 70s and yes, i played sir. in the 80s and then late 80s and 90s so you know we had vhs was nowadays the kids don't even know what vhs is and now cds are even kind of weird because it's all the cloud isn't it funny how time flies but it so, is it is I know you are close to Jackie, and rightfully so. She's just one of those people, you know. She's kind of like when I, I said I'm not going to get political, but when she was on the board and stuff, a lot of times she played devil's advocate, you know, and she's kind of got the personality you either love Jackie or you might not talk to her, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, sure. And a, yeah, a sure. lot of my friends are that way. I feel I've kind of grown that way over the years, but uh, she's done a lot in POAs. And when did you start kind of showing for her or with her? Or go ahead and just tell us that. Well, she um, offered me to fit a colt in 2014 for the select sire, and after I did that, he was uh, reserved there at the select sire in 2014. She offered me half interest in him, and that was JBJ's obvious kid, or we called him Bruno. Okay. And he came home with me then after the fraternity, and I kept him there. And a, a friend of mine, Tom Leak, we fit him for the uh, Congress the next year. And he went down and he won two classes down there, the yearling and the most colorful, and then stood reserve grand down there. So that kind of started it all that's the, um, okay. with Jackie and I. I think that's the picture we're looking at right here, select right. side reserve, yeah. yeah. So that's okay. So that was the first one. That's, and then since then, again, putting you on the spot a little bit, but there's been countless partnerships and you leading in and getting them getting ready and all right. kinds of stuff. So. Well, then the, the following year, she had a, a wild-colored colt at the BCF, and nobody wanted him. And so she asked me that next year what, what I wanted to show, and I said, I want that colt. And that ended up being locked and loaded. 
which of course was High Point Stallion in the nation that year, and he also stood grand, which was Jackie's first Congress grand champion right. um, with that stallion. Right, yeah, and he was a yearling when he did that too. So, yes, sir. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so it moved pretty quickly then, and then you've shown a lot of uh, kiddo bound stuff and, and stuff like that. So Most of it has been, and, yeah. and um, I don't know what you're going to say about Opal, but I was kidding Jackie one day. I, I've shown in the past the quarters and paints uh, halter horses, and, and I told her, I said, Jackie, I want a halter horse. You know, I want one of those big, <laughs> soggy ponies. Boy, did and you get she it. went out, <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, she went out and bought um, uh, obvious prophet mare and sent her to me and then opal was born that next year so okay and, we, we, and the rest of that's history right you know? we have a lot of pictures and those of you who don't know opal her registered name is jbj's uh kid dazzle right? Kidazzle. yeah yep. which is a cool because jackie names are kids with two d's so when you have kid adorable and kid dazzle i thought that's kind of a cool play on letters you know and stuff but exactly uh, i kind of went out on a limb tammy last night i advertised the crap out of this uh because i want a lot of people to watch this i want a thousand sure. views or so because jackie is so special to me and that mare you know, she's a halter mare. She's not maybe for everybody, the opal mare, but she, uh, I put on there arguably the greatest halter POA ever born, you know, and no one argued. I know some people are probably <laughs> thinking, but you know, usually you put, when you're a historian, you put one of the top or on the short right, list. Right. I said, I ain't gonna uh, beat around the bush. I'm just gonna say arguably the best halter horse. And I didn't say mare, you know, but she, right. would, she would beat a lot of horses, you know, in, to, for her right, height. Right, right. Yeah, so she's just something else. And we, we'll get into showing pictures of her later on because she's actually later in, from what we're doing tonight, she's going to be late in Jackie's career, really. Sure, yeah. sure. So, and then she became a grand champion. So now, Jackie, I want to put this out there to you and other people. She only needs a gilding to have all three. So, uh, right. and you're not, we're looking. yeah, you're look, there's a short <laughs> now. Jackie did show a gilding that she owned. Mr. McHugh will be talking about him tonight too, but, and he won grand under Jackie's leadership, but, uh, she wasn't the breeder of him, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and okay. then he had a son that was, uh, I think senior and maybe reserve grand. She was the breeder of him, but he didn't quite go grand. So yeah, if you guys can get a, a soggy gilding out there and win, uh, she would join a list of probably about three breeders right now, three that or four would, breeders. That would be awesome to put her there. Yeah, that that's sure. a short. And then she's also on a short list now of people that, breeders that have bred a versatility winner, and we'll get to her later in the show, and a grand champion. Some breeders have done it with the same horse, you know, in POAs, because you do it all. But, you know, she had JBJ's made a straw, was the second versatility winner, and now she's mm -hmm. had a couple grand. So that's a small list of breeders that have done that on both sides, too. So I'm going to show a few pictures of Jackie here, uh, just kind of not to embarrass her or anything. These were all published in the magazine <laughs> when she was running for director. So you can tell the different hairstyles over the years. So, you know, that was pretty early. And then here's one coming up. I won't keep it on long, but she looked pretty <laughs> excited there. So uh, sorry, Jackie, but I had to do it. I run across that in the magazine and I'm like, okay, she was either mad or really happy when that picture was taken. So, uh, and then there she is, is all really a young girl when she got in into POA, she was pretty young, a young lady. And of course, that's her with George Lalonde. And uh, so, you know, like I say, that was probably in the, she, Jackie might know the exact year. That was probably 78 or nine. So, um, well, anything you want to add, Tammy? Because I do got to talk to Jackie for about two hours. So I don't want to. Oh, well, <laughs> it won't take you. It, it, no, I don't have anything else to say, Ken. I just, I, I just want to say that I want to thank her for the opportunity she's given me in the POA breed. Okay. Um, she's kind of converted me from those other spotted horses. So, right. um, you know, I just want to thank her. And, and the opportunity she's given me is just unbelievable. Well, that's good. And um, you, in turn, have done a great job. I want to brag on you a little bit like the Year End magazine. I mean, that's just awesome. For someone like me that is going to look at that 20 years from now, you know, hopefully, you know, when I'm an old man and, and I can say, you know, it's nice to to someone that puts in the effort and does that because we were missing it for a while you know yes, we're still we were missing in, in, the magazine but at least you have that year-end deal that makes up for that so well yeah. we hope we can keep that going and, and put a plug in just for everybody to watch in uh, late september when we start selling advertising to support the thing that i hope that they 
uh, help out and support right. the, the yeah. association and the breed. So if you have a so budget, the start, you're right. If you have a budget, yeah, start, start saving now because it, absolutely, it's the who's who of who you know POAs. I mean, when you go through it, it's not many people are missing. They either you know just couldn't do it or missed the deadline because it it's everybody's in there. So it, it helps well, to be and, in there. And, Right, and it's our way of keeping our history. So, right. um, you know, we and need to be, we need to do that. That's number one to me. So, like you said, you did, you weren't born with too many talents. Well, I wasn't born with too many either. But POA <laughs> stuff's one of my talents. So. There you go. But if it's not out there, I can't memorize it. So, okay. So. All, All right, right well, Tammy. I appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. Thank well, you very much, Well, thanks for Ken. warming up the crowd. You were like the leading person, you know. Now, you know, so you you okay, warmed well. them up. It's all downhill from here, I guess. Oh, <laughs> no, well, we'll see. All right, Tammy. All right, Ken. Thank Thanks you, sir. You bet. Yep, bye. Uh, bye. All right, that was Tammy Verzi from Iowa that we got to talk to there, and we've seen some pictures of uh, some of the POA she's shown. And, of course, we're going to see her pictures later on with the Opal Mare and some, some of the babies and some of the prospects she's shown for Jackie. This is Jackie Guthrie when she bought me, to, or Julie Gaywell. That's right, Jackie. That was Julie Gaywell. And I got more pictures of that, too. That was just kind of an intro. So I'm just kind of, there we go. So I'm going to give Jackie a call now. I'm kind of letting the crowd build a little bit. I see some of the regulars are on here. And uh, Tammy's going to be on here. Unfortunately, I'm not smart enough to have two phone conversations going. And it, sometimes it gets a little tough when three people try to talk. So uh, I did do it this way, but Tammy's going to be making comments. And uh, anybody else that wants to make comments during the, the show, go ahead. And uh, I'm going to give Jackie a call right now. I haven't talked to Jackie in a little while, probably since uh, the show, maybe, the, the Tulsa show. So Jackie, a call right now. I can't. Okay, Jackie, you might well have to turn your computer down a little bit. So we don't get the reverb or the, you is know. Is that better? Is a that little better? bit, yep. Yep, I can't hear my voice. As long as I can't hear my voice, we're golden. <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing you a little bit back there, but but I hear you fine Turn on the phone. Computer. Turn my computer. I should have warned you on that one. So, but it's fine. If if it gets to be too much, people tell me like Tracy and. But uh, I turned off my phone on my computer. Perfect. Now I can't hear it. See, otherwise I could hear every word I was saying and every word you were saying twice. So. Oh, I got. Yeah, I get confused enough, so I don't need that. <laughs> A lot of people are going to be saying hi, so you can look on the comments. Uh, Tracy Sweet Keen just said hi, of course. So a lot of people's been looking forward to this show, Jackie. You've uh, meant a lot to POAs for a long time and still do. Your JBJ's prefix has uh, stood the test of time. You're one of the breeders that never gave up that prefix. You know, a lot of famous breeders like Owen Ziegler and uh, even Ray Peets, some of those guys switched prefix or dropped them for a few years and then went back. You always stuck with it that I know of. I might be wrong, but I don't. Yeah, I, yeah. you're right. You're yeah. correct. And sometimes, you know, if you breed to an outside stallion or something, it's tempting to just drop it for one year or one baby. But, you know, I think it's it's better if you don't. So. Right. right. I want to say thank you to you, Ken, for having me on as a guest tonight. This is kind of fun for me, and it was fun going through a lot, all those old pictures it's been many years since right. i've done that so it's right this, this will be fun for me tonight and hopefully fun for everybody else watching i hope so too because you know we kind of started with the beginning with tammy and more of the recent history just to get the crowd warmed up and then we're gonna because sometimes it's hard to start in the 70s and go all the way to the 2000s you know or the 20s we're in now so <laughs> i like to kind of do that and uh Tammy was a good guest. We didn't get to talk very long because I have like 200 pictures to get through. So, uh, so here's that I picture know. you sent me of that. I believe this is the one that you uh, that I've never seen this picture before, Jackie. So of your first it, POA. What's that? No, old. Oh, my first POA. Yes, she's actually not my first. Okay. She's the first, she's the first POA I ever showed. Okay. So I took to a, took to a POA so I. My first POA I bought was in 1973 from Harold Jackson in Fall Creek, Wisconsin. Okay. And and Harold uh, sold me this red mare. She was a white mare, so I didn't know really what to expect. On well, the next spring, that mare had a loud black and white leopard colt. Wow. <laughs> and by the time he was three months old, he was all white. 
he <laughs> lost his color. So um, I got rid of them, right. of that pair, because I wasn't a fan. And then in 1974, I bought this mirror from Lucy Johnson in Fall Creek, Wisconsin. And her name is Peacock Blue Corey. Okay. And that's Jan Bruner holding her there in that picture. <laughs> okay. And it was a cold, rainy, miserable day. But that's why Jan's got her foot up on her jacket. But the mare was, uh, I believe she was a yearling here. Okay. And, and uh, so that's how I got to meet Harold Jackson and Lucy Johnson. And as it turns out, uh, Janet and Fred Bruner also, and they were from Fall Creek. Too. Right. So all those people were of, from Fall Creek, and you were just down the road in Chippewa, right? Chippewa Falls? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Fred and Janet and I got to be very good friends right. um, through the, the 70s and 80s and 90s. Right. Pretty much. And they had double L Dickens then, and I bred to him quite a bit. Right, and you had some early champions from him, and uh, yeah. they bred the straw ponies. They named most of theirs because they were by him. Double L Dickens was a double L straw grandson, so uh, they named their right. stuff straw. We, I had an episode on them a while back. I don't even know if they got to see it or anybody related to them got to see it, but I did have an episode about the straws. So before we, I remember. you yeah, remember yeah. that, yeah. So I threw this picture in here. This is uh, at probably a convention or so because I know it's all about you tonight, Jackie. We're honoring you, but I know you're the oh. type of person that uh, you had a lot of influences. Even Jan, you know, was about your age, Fred and Jan, but uh, they, you yeah. guys gleamed off each other. But then people like the Victors, Howard and Wanda, and here's Keith Stone. I think Doc's in the background. I know you had a special relationship with Doc, and you know most of a, most of the people that were successful during that time did. You know, and then there's other people too. So I just threw this yeah. picture in there. It's not the great. You can't see your face, but you're. I can tell you're smiling, and it looks like Howard's yeah. goofing around. So. <laughs> Yeah, and Howard and Wanda were so influential in my early years in POA. You know, they really, Howard was on the board at the time, and he really took me under his wing. And Wanda, too, you know, she was like a second mom to me. Right. And they used to take, take me to the shows, and they took me to my first POA convention, and that was in Tennessee. Okay. One year, and that's back in the 70s, I think, too. But uh, Howard and Wanda... They raised a lot of great ponies. I used to love to watch Howard's show. <laughs> he was a showman, yeah. He was a showman. He had those white boots, and he had all that turquoise stuff. Right. You fun. can see and here he's got turquoise on at this banquet yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of funny. And, and I see Keith Stone and his wife at the right. table there, too. And they were, you know, Keith was president of the club back in the early years, and right. he did a lot to promote the sale. And yeah. other just wonderful memories i was lucky to be around in those days and meet a lot of those people right and get to know them see the way you but, felt in the age you were with those people that's how i felt around you you know what i mean because <laughs> it was another generation you know and yeah. guess who took me to my first convention you did yeah. so yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean so it's kind of funny how time goes on you know what i mean and then uh, hopefully i help people out but uh yeah that's just that's cool that's why i wanted to include that picture well now i got a picture of a mare that i know is very special to you and like a lot of breeders you've had a lot of great success and a lot of uh good opportunities but you've also had your share of heartache and heartbreak just like a lot of poa or any breeders do of animals and i know this mare ended up that way but she kind of put you on the map to start with i'd say yes she did and thank you for finding a picture of her because <laughs> i haven't seen one for a long time this is ss fallen rain she was she was bred by spud and dotty snyder in montana right and i bought her at a sale in rochester minnesota spring sale <laughs> From Joel Lowell, Cottonwood, Minnesota. Right. And uh, she was in full to a quarter horse stallion at that time. She was probably only a month or so away from pulling, but I bought the mare at that sale okay. and took her home. And she had her first bull was JBJ's Jigger Joe, who uh, was, I wasn't the breeder on him. Right. But he was the first probably really modern type POA that I showed, right. that I had. Right. And I had a lot of fun with him because it was, as a weanling, we, there he is, yeah, Jigger yeah. Joel. Yeah. As a weanling, we had such huge weanling classes in Wisconsin and Minnesota and Iowa. 
you know, it wasn't unusual to have 15 in the stud colt class, right. the silly class. Right. Because you had Leonard Lewis and Bud Campbell yep. and Paul Passy. Paul Passy, yeah. You know, there was a lot of them. There was a lot of them, yeah. So the babies and even you and your dad, you know, your dad was showing babies. Right. So that was, he was the first one that beat them all. Right. He beat them all. And uh, that was quite a thrill to me to beat my idol, you know. Right. The guys I, the guys I looked up to th- that had great horses. And so that he was, he was a lot of fun. I can remember the arena I was in the first time I beat Leonard Lewis and Paul Passy, you know, because yeah, yeah. after a while, and I was a kid, you know, but I'm like, I don't know if this is ever going to happen, you know, after a year or two. And then we, of course, we were brand new and we just, just like you did, you started getting better stock. And uh, yeah. uh, I think Star Tango Joe was the sire to Jigger Joe, yep, wasn't he? Right. Yeah, quarter you're horse. Right. Yeah. And, and he was a pretty and cool, was, yeah. This picture was taken in Baraboo, Wisconsin, actually, and that okay. was the weekend we had the POA fraternity. Wisconsin had the first POA fraternity in the nation. That's right. A lot of, people may, yeah. a lot of people may not know that, but this was at the fraternity show. Okay. And uh, we won. <laughs> we won both days under whatever the two judges or whatever they were right but, and i that outfit i have on was peach peach colored thank okay. goodness it isn't <laughs> this isn't a colored picture um so that's kind of that's going to date me a lot but, well uh, i know you've taken cool. grief about your hat especially when we get the yeah. made of straw that big that's old 10 gallon hat but hey you're in the you're holding the trophy with that hat on so who cares right yeah. all these years yeah. later somebody right. just commented you might be able to see on your screen but it says i showed a daughter of jigger joe for dan hoffman in indiana so yes, I, yeah he did yes yeah. Tammy did we talked about that not too long ago. Oh, okay that's did, cool. and, could, and that might have been oh i i don't know if Tammy remembers her name or not but yeah she did that okay. i remember that well, I'm going to get to some more Jigger Joe stuff here. Here it looks like he's probably a yearling, I'm thinking. He looks a little more stretched out. And, and of course, that first story you told about the baby being born with all the spots and then changing color, Jigger Joe yeah. didn't have that problem. So <laughs> he yeah, might have roamed yeah. a little bit, but he didn't have that other gene. So, yeah, that was that was good. And, this uh, is Jigger Joe as a yearling. A yearling. Yeah, there's my 10-gallon hat. Yeah. Yeah. It must have been popular at the time. It probably was. And then here he is. When did you sell him? As a two-year-old? Was he two or three? Uh, yeah, I sold him as a two-year-old at the international sale. Okay. And that's what Dan Hoffman bought him. Okay. Well, here he is as a two-year-old. Yeah. He had a big old shoulder on him and, you know, a yep. nice tail for the time. And, and then we're going to get to some of the – and there's the mayor, uh, the name, SS Fallen Rain, over on the side. Of course, the sire's on the other side. But here's JBJ's Jessica Jigger. That was a filly you had in 1980. Oh, Jerissa. Jerissa. Jerissa, Jerissa yeah. yeah. I can't read very well. But Jerissa Jigger's a 1980 Jaharan's Mavericks. Uh, surprise was the mother. So uh, yeah. she had some neat coloring on her. I remember her uh, as a young mare. But she's a baby yeah. in this picture. And, and then, she was actually a small mare. She didn't get she? very tall. Okay. She ended up with the... the 50 and under or 51 and under whatever it was at the time but yeah as a baby she was high point in the nation and she went to a lot of shows right well here's a picture it says 1980 jigger joe phillies this was a little uh breeders feature probably in 1980 because there's your daughter as a young girl Yeah, and uh, you yeah. sent this pic clipping to me, so I didn't have to. You sent me so many pictures. You did really well, Jackie, because usually I spend days and days just in the garage going through magazines, and I can usually remember when about where I want to go, you know, what years, because I know what years the horses were born. Uh, but you saved me the trouble of that. So Yeah, uh, did Nicole or Sean League Line yet, I think, at the time. Looked like, like it, maybe, yeah. It might have been eight, eight and under, I don't remember, but right. yeah, I was goes way back. Uh, Lee Rupplinger commented a couple hours ago on the Facebook group and said, we had JBJ's Peppy Joe. And I said, well, tune in tonight because here he is. Yeah. So, of course, this yeah, is this Sammy's is- mother, uh, Amy, holding him here. So. Yeah, that's Amy. Yeah. And uh, they bought him, I think, as a two-year-old, either okay. a yearling or a two-year-old. But um, when her, and then the, at the same time, Nicole was riding JBJ's Strawberry. He was two, a two-year-old, too. And, right. Uh, 
Amy came and stayed at my house for a couple of weeks, and we got both those ponies started with the girls riding them, and so it was a fun time. Right. Fun time for people. Both really nice ponies, you know what I mean? Just, you know, would become... For their time, yeah. For, for their, their time, time. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, they weren't, you know, they weren't the most spectacular, but they were quality. You know, you'd call them quality for sure. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and you, you could tell they were bred well. So here is uh, Double L's Dickens again, because he played. You played a big part in his POA career, and he helped your early career. So I threw in a picture of him. And later, just so you know, I'm going to have some pictures of some stallions. I felt like that you liked. You know, like of course, Double Tough's going to be in there, and a couple others. But yeah. but I put him yeah. in the timeline here because uh, now here's a picture of. This must be the Wisconsin Futurity or early. You're showing JBJ's made of straw. And then uh, there's Fred showing, or maybe I think that's Fred. It might be Jan showing cinnamon straw. They're little pictures. So, uh, that yeah, was, that, was, that, was a, that was a friend of Jan um, okay. that lived near Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And she actually was the breeder on this, on cinnamon straw. Oh, okay. And, she, and he was tiny. He was a late bull. It's okay. really little there, yeah. Right. It says Vicky, Vicky Dodge or something Vicky like Dodge, that. Yeah, yeah that was a, her. Uh, my eyes are still. I'm going to be 50 this year, but I'm squinting. I could see it, so I had to lean Yo, in. You're, you're doing great, Ken. <laughs> Thanks. And then there's another one down below. You put crisscross because, like they do sometimes in magazines, they they screwed up the name. It's over on the right, but it's JBJ's oh. Miss something. Miss oh, yeah. Nifty Tough Nifty. or something, yeah, but that's Miss on the Mighty same. Tough. Yeah, Miss Mighty Tough. Same. Mighty Prince. Yeah. yeah. So you were showing, so you won the whatever yearling fillies with her and the weanling fillies with Maida Straw. So, of course, right. Maida Straw is the one that really went on. I mean, Jigger Joe you had success with, but you were the breeder of Maid of Straw. So uh, she was out of the same mare, right? She was out of, yeah. yeah. She, was, she was out of SS Fallen Rain. Is she yeah. the last foal you had out of her or? No, no. I, I, I bred the mare back to Double L Dickens again, and then the following year, so it would have been 79, she pulled a solid red dun stud colt and, and uh, proceeded to, they called it casting her withers or something like that, but okay. anyway, her uterus was expelled, okay. and it broke the major arteries on either side of her tail head and she bled out within minutes oh wow see that's what i was so, talking about that was one of your first tragedies i know you've had some yeah. even in the last five ten years but you know yeah. breed, that's why tough people be stay breeders you know a lot of people can try to breed animals but the real tough ones are the ones that stick with it so i would uh, say my my vet was there within 10 minutes and he was in tears. No, oh, wow. He knew, he knew how much these ponies meant to me and how right how much I loved them and took care of them and right. So it was a tough. It was tough to lose her. And in the say seventy nine or so, I, you don't have to give your age, Jackie, but you're still a pretty young woman in seventy nine, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just miss showing POA youth by too many years. Right. But I was I was in my twenties here. You were in your twenties, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. So I was uh, probably uh, well, 1979. I would have been 26. Okay, so that's cool. So that, that's a lot of history. <laughs> so yeah. when you when we show these pictures of you from last year, everybody remembers. She's got a lot of history in POA. So yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, so here's Made of Straw's catalog picture. Of course, I have a lot of pictures of her because she became you know an all around famous POA, first mayor to win the versatility contest, the court, or no, second mayor, because Darlin' Jill second. won. Yeah, she was the second POA. I was thinking he rode a stud, but he rode a mare. And uh, yeah. yeah, she won in 86. And of course, John Katzenberger won in 85. But yep, she, and and, were, go ahead. And she, had a new, she had a new owner then when she won versatility, and that was Jerry King's daughter, Kelly. Right, right. She was riding and won the versatility on right her first truck. owner that you sold her to they didn't have versatility when she got rid no. of her yeah so because they did well too i think she supremed her so yeah yeah, yeah. julie right uh, julie, julie yeah. yeah yeah from decatur so okay right. so here she is that is julie right there with you i think and uh that's in the sales ring. Well, there's a lot of famous people in this picture. I'm not going to mention all of them, but that might be Fred Bruner with the hat on back there. I'm thinking it is in the left. But, uh, of course, uh, Kurt Phillips and Judy Phillips is in that picture. And 
a lot of famous yeah. people, but you there you are holding her. So yeah. yeah, she she was the high seller, I think, yearling Philly, wasn't she? Yes, uh, here, she yeah, she was. Yeah. Yes, she was. She yeah. was a pretty mare, very yeah. athletic mare. Right. You know, she had a lot of go to her. <laughs> you sold her and uh, Jigger Joe the same sale. Of course, the Hoffmans bought Jigger Joe. So one went to Indiana and one went to Illinois. So, right. Yeah. And that's, you got hooked on the sale. I mean, didn't you became a big part of the national sale? Over oh, the I never, I start my very first sale was hard and Wanda took me to the international sale when it was in, oh, it was in Iowa, but not in Des Moines. Okay. Where, Marshalltown? Where could be. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. And uh, that was my very first sale, 1975 or 76. Okay. And I never. I never missed an international sale after that. Wow. Not one. Wow. And and I just loved the sale. That was my favorite event of the year was right. the sale. Yeah. Loved it. I did too. I loved the sale from the first time I went. And of course I, I couldn't go all the continuous years. I went I think when I was like fourteen or thirteen and then but once I became an adult I didn't miss a sale until I got out of POAs. You know, once I was like twenty one. I went all through yeah. my twenties and thirties, so and of course now the, the sale, you know, things just change. I mean, the, you know, online and just different marketing and stuff. And of course the bubble that broke in the horse industry about 10 years ago, we just didn't have yeah. the ponies, but, but it's coming back now. I mean, there's getting to be a lot of demand and more starting to be a few more POAs out there, but we're just going to run through a few more pictures of JBJ's made of straw, Sadie, they called her of course, and there she is pretty early on under saddle. And then, here she is after she went to California, and uh, she only had one full. And uh, I don't have a picture of him in here, but I do have the picture that comes full circle. There you are with, uh, of course, uh, Susie and Barb, and uh, when you bought my lucky zipper. So kind of oh, tell yeah. that story, please. Yes. <laughs> so, made a straw. She was only bred once in her life, and she was later on in years. And she was bred to um, Lucky Straw. Well, she produced. She produced yeah. Lucky Straw, yeah. She produced Lucky Straw. She was bred to Gambler's, uh, what's his name? Super. Uh, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Right? And, and Yes, you're right. And anyway, that was the only foal. Right. And that foal ended up to be the sire my lucky zipper right they bred they bred uh, lucky straw then to a zippo pine dot bar own daughter to get this colt yeah. we're seeing in the picture and he was a fancy yeah. baby and of course the pony farm and you teamed up to purchase him as a baby and uh, yeah. we got more pictures of him here here he is with the barb clark looking on his patch showing him yeah the he, clark family michigan raised him and actually right. they had taken him to the international show that year and he was first under all three judges, but they had the wrong back number on. So he was DQ. I remember that. Yeah, I yeah, do remember yeah. that. That was sad because he was a typey. You know, he turned into a typey stallion too, as you can see here. He's still young yeah. in this picture. So let's see. Yeah. He was yeah. So here he is as a two-year-old. So uh, he's a yeah, he might be a two-year-old. He's the 2005 or 2000. Yeah, I cheated. I went back just now and looked in the video, and it's 05 when he was a baby. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I could, because here he's, you know, because he's not a real tall horse for being a half-quarter horse. Uh, no. He's actually more than half-quarter horse with the straw on the top side. But, uh, yeah. But uh, he's still alive, right, at the pony farm? Oh, yeah. So yeah. They're still breeding mares, and I'm. I'm still, uh, I've had some daughters of his, been lucky enough to have some daughters of his, and then I bought a baby filly from the pony farm last year. Okay. It's a daughter, daughter of his out of a kiddo tough daughter. Oh, wow. We're talking all good stuff there. So, uh, <laughs> Of course, one of my biggest fans of this show, she's a good friend of mine because she's a fellow historian, and that's Tracy in Florida. She has a, doesn't she have a daughter of his? Yes, she does. Yeah. Um, and it's one that I bred and raised. Right. And she was looking for a few spots because she had the solid stallion, you know. And and this mare was just made for Tracy, and I wasn't going to let anybody <laughs> have it but Tracy. And that's the mare that raised a couple of her. Right. We're going to show days. them at the end of the episode. Where I got a picture of her and uh, two of her babies. So 
Yeah, including yeah. last year when that yearling, the yearling filly did so well. So, so here's my yeah. lucky zipper feeling his oats a little bit when he's older. And there it says 05 and 54 inches. But uh, he just brings such a cool pedigree, especially with the Zippo's Dynaflow, his mother, you know, being a, she's a well-bred yeah. mare top and bottom, not just Zippo Pine Bar. But, uh, right. so, yeah, and then... Uh, so now we're going to go back a little bit because I, you know, I was still talking about made a straw. So we're still in the straw years. We're still that early. So people, if you want to stretch your legs, it's going to be a long show. <laughs> I'm going to try to wrap up by 830 or so, but we'll see. There's no time limit on these things, Jackie. So, uh, that's, that's good. I'll right. try to stay You'll stay awake. Yeah. Here's <laughs> JBJ sizzling straw. And uh, yeah. he was solid, wasn't he? Sol or, he was solid. He was yeah. a solid day. Yeah. And, but he was a stud. I kept him for a while. I did breed to him a little bit. I couldn't get anybody else to breed to him, though. Right. But he, he was a very tighty, modern-looking POA. He was, and yeah. If, if he'd have had spots, you know, who knows what he would have done. Right. I got to tell you a story. Bruners and you both have produced so many nice bays you know straws like straw jamie and stuff that we ended up owning we bought from you but the first time we went to bruner's place my dad loved he called them red horses you know chestnuts and sorrels and that's what he tried to breed but he owned a lot of bays of course but for yeah. some reason because all those bays he just assumed double l dickens was a bay and he gets out of the truck, and I said, well, that's got to be him over there, because you could tell he was a little corridor stallion, you know. And my dad goes, he's red. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I remember Jan going, yeah, what color did you think? And he said, well, everything I see out of him is a bay, you know, or by him. <laughs> so that was just the mares that were getting crossed to him at the time, you know. But, uh, right. Yeah. So here you are holding a young gilding. This is, uh, I believe, JBJ Strawberry. My, my picture hasn't changed Okay, yet. yeah, I, I need to give you a little more lead time. While we're doing that, Tracy says, I'm sitting in the barn with a waxing mare. Yeah. So Tracy's <laughs> looking at a mare okay. about ready to fall. So uh, It could be a gentle night for Tracy. It could be, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is JBJ Strawberry. Okay. He He's was a yearling. Yearling here, yep, yeah, and he won the yearling gildings. And I have yeah. a lot of pictures of him because he was he went on to be famous. Here he looks like a bred mare, but he was a two year old here in eighty four. So uh but let's I got see. a lot of stories about him too, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> I bet you do. He was out of old Tika, right? Tika's Miss Silhouette. Tika's Miss Silhouette. Yeah. yeah. So on and the mother's he side great. he'd be uh totally tough and ja and uh Tracy Stay and Doc's Tough Tiger. <laughs> yeah, half yeah. brother. Yeah. Half. Right. And there was another one that was a full sister to Strawberry called Ada Straw Girl. Yep, Ada Straw Girl. She went to Iowa for a while as a broodmare, yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't include a Stra picture of her, but. Strawberry was uh, my driving pony, too. Um, plus, Nicole rode him. She actually trained him and she rode him at the International when okay. he was a two year old. And she, she plays really high in the 13 through 18 equitation okay. that year on that two-year-old. He just, he was a phenomenal pony. Right. Yeah, I have so a couple we, pictures of her riding him. The second one, Nicole's starting to get a little more, more mature, looking like she did later, you know what I mean? You Because at yeah. first we've seen some pictures of her as a little girl. Now she's a teenager. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and... And I think I have a driving photo of, there's the driving photo. It'll come up pretty quick. But you're in front of the, the round arena there in Des Moines. So everyone that shows POAs knows where that street is. So, and, you know, the, the funny thing was there was a lot of people in POA, um, and even on the board of directors that didn't know I had a child that was showing. All right. Yeah. Right. Well, even today, you know, like my dad was that way. Mom would go to some things, but rarely, like she'd go to the year end meetings that was her futurity at Leonard Lewis's house and stuff like that. You know, she'd go to the sale. She loved the sale, but she was a stay at home mom all the way, you know, basically. So a lot of times people, it was just dad and I, and there's a lot of women that go to shows and you never meet their husbands, you know, <laughs> but if you go to their place, they're leading the horses around and they're a big part of it and stuff. And they got kids, yeah. but uh, yeah, Tracy just commented that Tiger has a full sister, too, and it's in Jake's pedigree. That'd be the Leopard Docks Double Dare is her name. So, yep. yeah. Yep. Mm. And th and this is the year, I believe he was two here, that 
we won the driving security right that year. you're holding the plaque you're holding the plaque yeah. there so yeah but now i moved on to totally tough but the picture before where you're driving you're holding the plaque you are here too you're holding the silver plate this was uh the facilities they had for like two and three year olds and, yeah he was like me he might have been a two-year-old that year yeah, i don't know you're right but, uh strawberry though he had a phenomenal go you know in cart right but it's after they had known the placing he reared up <laughs> oh, no. me out the cart. but the class was over so it didn't matter we, we had wired one right he sold for uh <laughs> didn't he top with the sale one year like in 86 he topped the sale in indiana yeah in indiana yeah and uh it was bought by the grayson family in alabama okay and they ended up when they sold him they sold him to tanya tucker right the famous singer and she had him for her two little girls when they okay. were small okay and he used to pull a surrey around and things <laughs> for, with her kids so there was they a poa a loud colored poa a national champion running around her place pulling her kids around yeah that's a good right. story right and i believe i believe he he died on her place okay so unfortunately for that's a cool story but unfortunately for you he didn't keep going in a poa family but at least he made people happy you know yeah he didn't go on so so here's another one that was uh born on your place jbj's totally tough you weren't the breeder of him because you purchased the mare from doc right. nemmers doc. But, yeah so this would be he'd be a full brother to tiger and that mare i just mentioned of course tiger's a 79 totally tough's an 81 but the difference with totally tough was he's a few spot so right yeah yeah and he wasn't very big either no but yeah he was a few spot so yeah, yeah. O olin sold tiger and then ended up breeding to his full brother through you <laughs> because yeah, he was he shorter and, and he was a few spot instead of a leopard so right yeah. So here's another trophy you won because he won, uh, I believe, well, yeah, well, I know it is. It's a three-year-old. He won the three-year-old stallions in 84 at the national show. And that's this picture here. And then oh, I yeah. think I got another picture of him. Uh, this is a, probably a Sharon Fallon's picture because almost everybody that showed in Wisconsin has at least one photo from her because she was a great oh, photographer. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so he was a bay a uh, few spot right bay pointed yeah 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 so you had was, quite a few babies by him in a short period of time yes i did yes i did right but i sold him when he was he wasn't too old i don't no, remember he wasn't very four, old yeah or five, and he went to a family in michigan and a few months after the sale he died of an aneurysm I remember that. I remember him having, because yeah. that kind of taught me what an aneurysm was, you know, because <laughs> I yeah. remember I was like 14 or 15 and you were telling me you came to Minnesota to a show we put on and uh, you were telling me about it. It just happened. It was kind of sad because, yeah, he was only like five or six years old, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes, and that was a terrible thing. And it's the first time I've ever heard of a horse having an aneurysm and right. I really haven't heard of it too many since, but that's right. what happened. Uh, Nicole rode him a little too, didn't she? Because this is Nicole yes, on him. Yep. yep. Okay. And then here's some of his babies. This would have been in 84. Uh, you know, T. Toller, I remember him. And, uh, yeah. of course, he was by Strahd, or out of Strahd, Jamie. And then here's yeah. the one, some I'm talking about that uh, Ziggler's had some. And uh, so this yeah. shows, this ad shows some of the mares you had and stuff. I mean, you know, pedigrees of them a little bit. So I like this yeah. ad. And uh, yeah, yeah, JBJ is totally cool. tough. Yeah. And that Miss Rich Brick, too, I'm she had some nice ones too. And that JBJ stuff is brick, I kept her pretty much all of her life, right? She ended up, I showed some babies out of her, I think. I think her and Snowstorm had a filly I showed for you one year. You showed something else, and yeah, I think yeah. you had about three fillies in Des Moines that year, and I showed. The one on her, and she was, she had a real good disposition, was really laid back. I can't remember her name. Uh, you had Bossy Body Brick and all kinds of names, I think. So, or Busy Body. Busy Body. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, here we mentioned T. Toller. So, then you had Tolly Macho. He probably became your most famous Tolly Tough offspring, wouldn't you agree? 
I would say so, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And this is young uh, Holly Hammer here, and this would be at the sale. Oh, that's cute. That's a cute picture of Holly. Uh, yeah. That's a good picture, and you're smiling too, so... Yep, I remember well, yeah. you showing him as a baby and a yearling. You showed him in Oklahoma City as a yearling colt. Yeah. 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 And what I did, didn't know in those days, because, of course, we didn't have genetic testing, we didn't know, um, he was a silver black. Okay. His spots were never real vivid, vivid. You know, they were right. a little fake, some of them, and we did, couldn't figure out why because there was no gray there, and, you know, neither parent was a gray. Right. But he... He was a silver black, and then years later, I found out that St. Nick's snowstorm carried the silver gene. Right. Of course, we didn't know what it was at the time. Right. Yeah, I know we're going to get into snowstorm a little later, but when Ray Peets had him, I remember him telling my dad, well, I like the stallion, but I got rid of him because he threw mustards. <laughs> <laughs> he called them mustards because they really were different color. And like, and Tracy's going to chime in here, I'm sure too, because she knows a lot about color. And you know, back then we didn't we didn't know as much about color. I mean, we knew a little bit about color producing, but we learned we're learning yeah. that too. But the silver, this and that, and all these genes and stuff, we just it's this or that, you know. And a lot idea. of horses were mislabeled. So this is a good color photo of him here at Gary Hamilton photo yeah. after he went yeah. to Michigan, and then yeah. here's. Here's a picture of her showing him in 89 at the national show. And they were a good young team. And, and you know, he spent his whole life with the Hawkins in Michigan. They gave him a great home. Right. And, and she showed him as a stallion too, right? The, yeah, and yeah. I think he... I think he was a supreme champion. I'm, I'm not, pretty sure he was. Yeah, I I wouldn't feel bad if I misquoted that because I'm pretty sure he was, yeah. So here's yeah. a collage of him, a bunch of pictures. Uh, they were nice enough to send me some pictures of him. So that always helps yep. when I do a, an episode about somebody, if I can get nice pictures like this, you know, that maybe some people haven't even seen some of these pictures before. Oh, so. I, love, I love these pictures of Holly. And <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and they're a good POA family too, you know, a big tradition yeah. in Michigan there. So it continues to go. And her kids, uh, her kids show. yeah, they brought him out of retirement, I think Debbie told me when he was older he lived to be an older horse so uh, yeah yeah so but so, he, was, he was a great performance horse oh he, he was yeah nice luck and he really was a good performer he was a nice nice mover right and he was and the cross team. between double tough and double l's dickens you know which you kind of yeah. you did that a lot later on you know what i mean because you got some i tried <laughs> you tried yeah you got some straw mares and stuff and then of course you bred a lot of double tough stuff so so here's an ad probably in, oh, I don't know what year this would be, 89 or 90. But the reason I put it in this spot is because the aged mare there, I'll have a picture of her as a baby. That's total treat. My my family bought Straw Jamie from you right after yeah. Macho. was You kept Totally Macho, but then we bought her in full to Totally Tough. And unfortunately, yeah. she, we, I don't want to get too sad to show, but we had an outside mare on the place. Dad was trying to sell from for somebody, and she kicked Jamie. And my dad was so mad. <laughs> I thought he was going to do something to the other mare, but he didn't. He calmed down. But we we tried to save her, and we did save her long enough to have her full. You know, months later, she fold out in this leopard mare that uh, Nicole's holding here. That became the baby. Total treat. Yeah. Yeah. And she's, so you're the breeder of her, but she was foaled on our place. And uh, yeah. let's see, I so I got a picture of her coming ended, up, but uh, I'm yeah, going to. She ended up being um, the grandmother, I think, of definitely a dream to see. She did, because I got her son. I have two of her sons on here. She okay. JBJ's totally, or JBJ's double trouble that I think oh, yeah. either you That's or Nicole bred. Nicole might be the breeder of him. I'm not Nicole. sure. No, I no, think I wasn't. You he were? Was born, he was born on the 5th of January. Oh, wow. And, we, and because I had thrown her out with Mr. McHugh because I couldn't stand him in the barn anymore. Okay. I just threw him out. Just right. threw him out. And, of course, she settled. You know, he right, her of course she did. At the January, 1st of February. And she fooled the 5th of January. Wow. And we had her in the cow barn, so it was it was warm enough. For her to fold, but the foal was so big, big shouldered, she couldn't get him out. The foal got stuck. Right. And oh, we wow. Had to have the vet come. We had to pull that foal. 
Wow. And he was such a big pull. I'm going to skip uh, that, forward a little bit because I got a picture of him. Here's Mr. McHugh, but we'll get back to his story. He's the one you bred her to, you know, kicked him out and she, she settled. Here she is as a baby. Uh, you'll see it in a minute, but this is total treat. Uh, with My dad's in the background. You can't see his face, but that's my mom with her hand there on her muzzle. And she's probably nine, ten days old. You can see by her, oh, her tail. Yeah. She's got the nine-day full squirts yeah yeah so she had a pretty head she was very typey you know and we ended up selling her to caswell's i think early on as a baby or a yearling but uh and then here's that picture of her with nicole she became a nice bodied you know really nice mare she was real smooth uh, but when yeah. bred to mr McHugh, she had this big uh fuse spot on the left there that's him and his dad that's mr McHugh on the right and the her foal that you're talking about uh, yeah, JBJ's double trouble born January fifth. I didn't realize that that he was born that hence, early. Hence his, hence his name, Double Trouble. Right, Double Trouble. <laughs> yeah. So, and these guys went. Uh, I think senior and reserve in this picture. They didn't go grand and reserve, but they won. I'm pretty sure they were senior and reserve, and then a junior came up and got them. But father okay. and son went first and second, and then okay. se senior and reserve. Yeah. So, so that's a cool picture. And then we got both his parents, you know, because the leopard's his mother and that, that guy there. No wonder it's, he's a few spot because of snow cap. But I'm going to flip back a little bit to this 1988 picture, a Gary Hamilton photo of you and uh, Mr. McHugh, because you won grand champion gilding with him, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did. And yeah. Wayne uh, Black was his breeder. Right. He was a full brother to Cutie McHugh, the one that won the Futurity. Correct. Yeah, High yes, Plains Drifter and Cricket McHugh. Yeah, so uh, another snow cap. And then when I sold him, uh, Larry and Crystal Myers bought him for their daughter Lee. Right, and he and became a good horse for her, for sure. Yeah. 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 I don't have a picture of that. I, if I would have had more time or we had infinite amount of hours, yeah. you know, I would have all that too. But yeah, they definitely became a good good team in Iowa. So here's, you mentioned definitely a dream to see. Well, his sire yeah. is uh, definitely a dream sickle who is a son of total treat. Uh, right. And that's him there. He was a beautiful young guy and not a lot of muscle, but he was just a, he's a yearling in this picture. Campbell's dream yeah. catcher bred total treat. And, uh, and then later he, of course his son was, he bred, I think as a two year old, he bred a mare and out came definitely a dream to see. I know he was young when that happened. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So now I'm gonna, I, go ahead, Jackie. Okay, go ahead. No, you can go you, ahead. You, you talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had bought uh, a daughter of definitely a dream to see from Posey Buck that was out of a kiddo top daughter. And uh, she, I lost her last year. She was just a, um, a th well, three-year-old, just barely a three-year-old. Was I that the one little. named Dreamers Dream, or Dreamers or? Dream. Dream. Yeah. Dream. yeah. And that yeah. the mother was a mare I bred named the Candy Ojai yeah. Kid because she was born. You came to that yeah. sale both years in Candy Ojai, Minnesota that my dad and I put on. And the one year, you know, we just like Tracy's doing tonight, you wait for the babies to be born. And I had three babies born during that sale that year. I couldn't believe it. I missed two of their births because I was reading pedigrees, hosting a POA <laughs> sale. And uh, I get home, and that one, I said, I'm naming her the Candy Ojai Kid and calling her Candy. And that's the one that became the mother yeah. to the one you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, so, it's one of the best mares I ever owned in my life, unfortunately. I'm so sad you lost her. Yeah, Dreams with a Z at the end was her name, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she had a bright future. Go ahead. And There's double top. top. Yeah. Did you like him a little bit, Jackie? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I did. I just and I love Doc and his family, and right. I love this horse, and I loved his son, Doc Tuff Dude, and all of those. I mean, so many. Right. He he had such an impact on the breed overall. Well, he changed it. I mean, I, I won't argue with anybody, you know, like if I was talking to somebody on the phone, I'd just say, I got to go if they argued with, because he did change the POAs. I mean, that's a matter of fact, you know, he so did. he did. And then okay. also he, he not only did it himself, but I kind of mentioned this when I wrote spots included, people tried to go after him as far as competition. So he changed the breed that way too. Because, yeah. you know, Gold Prince and Prince Fury and Monty's Award and all these other different horses, you know, came after him to, 
to compete against him, and a lot of good blood was put in POA and kind of led to where we are now with the yeah. horse. You know, it's not a pony. It's a pony height and a horse look. So, right. On. Yeah. And so many of his sons are famous, and they're premier sires. And, of course, oh, yeah. I don't know. You know, Double Tough himself got to be a golden premier sire, the first one in our breed. He was, yeah. Yeah, I was just talking to Dave Morris last night. I told him uh, I got to make Kiddo Tough a go because he's a golden premier, but I don't, I haven't proved it yet. But I know he is because of rough and tough. And Kiddo Bounce is probably getting close to being a premier. Yeah. I don't know if he is, but if he is, there's some other mares that are, prim, you know, he's got more than three premier sires and dams. Kiddo does, and he's a premier. So I know he's and one. I, and I always thought that Totally Tough was a premier sire too, but I never. Never got back to research it, but right. I know there was two supreme champions, and there possibly was a third. Right. Because it wasn't total sweet, wasn't that one of his that showed in Wisconsin? Totally sweet. Totally that sweet. Was what, yeah, that was Doctor Jones. Right, Doctor Jones. Yeah. She was a good show mare. Yeah. 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 If totally tough would have lived a lot longer, I mean, he would have definitely made his mark. You know, just like. Uh, Tiger did for Tracy. He became a premier right. sire. Here's dude. I always liked Doc's tough dude. I know you did too. You owned, uh, well, you bred to him. You know, you bred to dude and had some fillies by him and different and sons. And uh, of course, he 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 was an had an impact on your program. Yes, he did. Yeah. I dude. I think dude confirmation wise better than double top. Right. Isn't that funny? Because he, you know, he had, well, Doc took a chance and bred Miss Puff. You know, she was half quarter horse, but uh, yeah. that's what made him so good. And of course, Built Tough was a little taller, but uh, Double Tough hit it right on the mark there. I mean, uh, dude hit it right on the mark. Of course, then Double Sweet, my family coaxed her away from Doc, and then you ended up with her after we yeah. sold our POAs. And uh, she went a little different route first, but then you got her. And uh, yeah. she she never disappointed, you know. She should be yeah. she's a famous yeah. broodmare, you know. Yeah, she should be uh, recognized if you know right. just the production record that mare had. Was right. Enough. Yeah. Well, she Doc raised quite a Bold Prince by Gold Prince, and of course Kelly King's made him a famous gilding, and then the one by Tough Plot it became a well known. At first, he died pretty young too, but uh, that's a the one Doc had, yeah, Doc's just as tough that George Bishop bought. And then, of course, the Crisco Kid. And then you had some JBJs by Kiddo and uh, Snowstorm. Yeah. That was good. One of my favorite POAs out of her was one you bred, and that was the Snow Angel mare. She was such yeah. a beautiful mare. And, uh, of course, I, I like Kiddo more than Snowstorm because I was a little biased there. But uh, I did like that. That filly was awesome. So, uh, yeah. Here's another stallion. I know you ended up breeding to him and uh, had some foals, brought some mares from uh, Lynn Puffenberger, and this is Salty Gotta Look. So I threw him in there because I know you had quite oh. a few of his fillies. Yeah. yeah, I liked him a lot also. Yeah. You he seen him in Tulsa when Tommy was showing him. I remember you telling me he's going to be something. Well, he ended up in the Hall of Fame. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he got hit by lightning. <laughs> he did. He Yeah, he's yeah. another stallion that died young. I had a colt on my place getting him ready for Lynn when Lynn called and said, well, that colt you got is going to be one of the last ones because he's, he's gone. Because one of the reasons Lynn and I became so close and I'm sitting where I am today is because of Lynn Puffenberg. I'm in Oklahoma because of him. There's no doubt about it. And, it's some, and a part of that's because of you. You might not even know this story, but you had me – get uh, a filly ready that was by this stallion and out of Miss Crystal Snow. And I showed her at the Futurity for you. And one judge, there was a bunch of fillies in there, like 40, I think. One judge put a second, and I don't think the other two judges used this. We still ended up like six because, you know, just the second place was big. And um, I always remember, here come Lynn. I was his new best friend, you know. (laughs) We knew each other. We'd we'd went out with a group before and ate, you know, with you and different people, you know. And I he knew yeah. who I was, and I knew who he was. We respected each other. Yeah. But ever after that day, there was pretty much a salty up in Minnesota from then on. So oh, uh, that's, that's a cool that's a cool story. <laughs> so that was your filly. I can't even remember her name. JBJ's. Do you remember her name? I don't. And in the picture, I, I couldn't use it because it was a video one, you know. But that's fine. But 
Uh, I didn't like myself in that picture anyway, but uh, <laughs> here's a mare that I know you might not have got too much, but Doc got some stuff out of her, and then uh, this is Oklahoma Lady Gambler, Jackie, and she was a cool oh, mare, yes. and she went on yes. to have those Super Sun babies that yes. then went back and bred that stallion, Gambler Super Mario, and there was Gambler Sunny Boy, and yeah, and then we're, because you brought her to Wisconsin, so. Yeah, She's a, she was a little mare. Right. And uh, she was a supreme champion herself. Right. And I said I had to wait until she was like 20 years old before I could afford to buy her. Because <laughs> she always went for so much money. Right. Well, I remember I you bought her in 86 when you sold, uh, I think you sold strawberry or one of those, and strawberry or macho, and uh, you bought that mare from Doc, and yeah, she was starting to go get a little low in the back and was running out, yeah. but you still knew she was... You know, she had it in her, so. And so when I owned her, I could never get her in full. I tried for a couple of years, and I could not get that mare in full. And uh, so I ended up, I sold her to Jerry Olson. Okay. In, in uh, Barron, Wisconsin. Right. And Jerry had a couple kids, Jamie and, and her brother. And, it, and her little brother, she, he rode this mare and showed her. Of course, Jerry got her in full, thanks. <laughs> Right away, <laughs> read, read her to Super Sun. Right. That Bill Colters and his wife had. Right. And so that's, that's where Gambler Sunny Boy came from. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and the Baron. Yeah. Yeah, well, the Baron is, yeah, he's a little different. That's by Tiger yeah, and how the hired hand, but right. Tracy was saying that. So, so now yeah. we're going to move on to another part of you. You know, you. If you wrote a book about your breeding career, it would definitely be chapters, and it still is today. You're in another chapter right now, and I'm not saying it's bad. You know, if you don't have chapters in a book, it's a pretty boring story. So uh, uh, here's the St. Nick Snowstorm chapter. So and you, uh, the snowstorms are coming, the snowstorms are coming. You're one of the master promoters that's ever been in POAs, and I'm saying that as a compliment. And, uh, you know, people... People wanted to drive to Wisconsin and get your stuff, and then when they won with it, they were glad they did. So, uh, yeah. So talk about Snowstorm a little bit, Jackie. Snowstorm was, um, I bought him from Ray Peets. And, well, Larry Gibson and I bought him from Ray Peets. Right. Larry Gibson and I owned him together. Right. And we went out, we went to Ray's place, Larry Gibson and I, and, and looked at all his ponies and, I don't remember how big the trailer was, but we got way, way more ponies in there than there should have been. <laughs> no, no storm being one of them. And the other one that I just loved was Miss Crystal Snow. And she was a weanling at that time. But that's uh-huh. when I bought her. When we bought Snowstorm and Larry bought a couple more. And, and uh, But Miss Crystal Snow was was out of that great quarter mare that Ray had. Right, well, the app mare, the quarter mare's daughter. Mare. Yeah, Gay right. Leah. Driftwood's Gay Leah, who ended up yeah. producing like five or six national champions, including your mare. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she was a great mare. Yeah. So that was a lot. That's where Snowstorm came from. Right. Um, I, uh, he was named St. Nick Snowstorm because St. Nick is George Bishop's right. prefix. He was born in Utah. And he was born in a, he was a white colt, and he was born in a snowstorm. <laughs> right. Outside. And he was little. He was a little white colt because he never did grow up very tall. Yeah. So, uh, no. you and uh, I think you and uh, especially Larry Gibson both made some trips to Spencer, Iowa, buying some stuff like, like Little Richie and different things. You know, I think. Yeah. And that's when finally you guys just got the stallion. And I remember you telling me, Larry said, "What am I going to do with the stallion?" Of course, he had Mister Cool back in the day. Yeah. You know, for Connie to yeah. ride. But so that's why you ended up with. Uh, snowstorm then because larry really at that point didn't want to stay in so uh right yeah he, he didn't know but uh snowstorm and he also carried the silver jean or, or i guess we talked about that before yeah he, he carried, yeah and, then it, and it i don't have a lot of good examples of it but he had dark colored uh babies with really white manes and tails you know they for sure and uh yeah. now i'm showing a picture of uh, miss crystal snow and you made her famous. I mean, if, you know, she could have went on to be, a, she did for you anyway, but if she would have went somewhere else, she might have become just a broodmare or something, you know, and uh, you ended up showing her and halter. And then, uh, of course, you raised some babies out of her too. 
and she was actually she had a as a young man she had a show career. Um, one of the youth here in Wisconsin showed her as a two and three year old. Okay. In uh, English and Western and did very well. So okay. She was a very athletic mare. Right. But I, yeah, I wanted her mainly for a boot mare. Right. So this is this is the year. This is the international in Detroit. Yeah. And she was she was two that year and she won the two year old mare class. She did. Yeah. She went reserve junior champion behind. Uh, Tracy Porter's yearling. PPP is stop and stare. Yeah. Stop and stare. And stop yeah. and stare when grand champion mare that year. Right. She, she really had her fit to a T. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, she, she was did. fancy looking. She was a tough plot at daughter by out of a quarter mare. And Tracy, right. that Tracy raised the baby, and she, she did a good job. But Crystal had so much body, you know, that she was always yeah. a bodied up mare. For back in 93, that was a lot of body on a two year old. Yeah. 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 So, okay, yeah. here's a 93 too. This is uh, another snowstorm filly that you did well with. And we're going to have to talk about Latch's Shady Lady a little too. But this is oh, yeah. uh, JBJ's uh, Ms. Sable Snow, right? Is her name? Yeah, Ms. Yeah. Sable Snow. Yeah. Yep. And then that's Marcy in this picture. I was at that show with you at the World Show because you had a kiddo tough daughter there too. You showed two fillies. Of course, they went first and second, but uh, yep. that's Marcy with a snowstorm baby out of one of her mares, and that was uh, Blizzards Are Tough, she named him. Uh, yeah. 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 That's a great picture, Marcy. Yeah, and they both won at the World. That's why you took that picture. So I believe he won his class. I'm sure he did. I know you did. And then this filly went on to win the Select Sire that year. Won the Select Sire, and, and then that was the year that uh, Pony Farm, Susie Drish, they won with the Colt, who was uh, skipping tent. Right. Yeah. Was Pal- Palomino was Colt. Yeah. Yeah. So we won it the same year, and we're, you know, very good friends. Right. Ended up being, and uh, we both won that same year. So right. That was, kind of- that was kind of cool, yeah. You became even closer after that, I would say, you know, over the years. Yeah, so yeah. That was kind of the beginning of the friendship. So here's a picture of you at the Tulsa State Fair. This is, the, of course, the Select Sire for Charity. This would have been 1993. And that yeah. color on that filly just, whoo, you know, that was Snowstorm didn't oh. put any silver on that. He, uh, yeah. that, that mare, Shady Lady, was quite a mare. Talk about her a little yeah. bit, Jackie. Yeah. And her name was Latches. Shady Lady. Yeah. And Howard and Wanda owned that mare. And they had raised some babies out of her, but I talked them out of that mare. They let me <laughs> buy her finally. I bugged them to death. And she was by Latches BB's number one son. Right. Who Judy Katzenberger ended up owning and using for a number of years. A little leopard anyway, style, yeah. 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 But, but Shady Lady was a big black mare. She was solid color. Yep. I, I don't remember exactly how big she was but anyway we bred her to snowstorm and we got this filly and then marlene borjan bought her that year right and took her home and she she did stay in height and marlene brought her back to the sale when she was in her teens i think she was right Yep, she became a big-bodied mare, too, just like Marlene likes. I, you know, I yeah. knew Marlene would like her because that's the type of baby she raised, too, because she was showing uh, really good babies at the time, or Mark was for her. So oh, yeah. I think this is a yeah. Shady Lady uh, produce here. There's three of them. But... Jessica Drish said uh, Skipping on Stars. That was the Yeah, there. Skipping so, on Stars. Know. There was like four or five of those out of that mare. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is like this shady lady. This is the baby. Then there was a yearling. And then the two-year-old, um, that was one that Fred and Jan Bruner had raised. Is that was uh, Ben Tempted, wasn't it, or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And they called him had Ben. Really, yeah. Had a really cool name. Jan had cool names for her pony. Right. Is the the one in the middle, I think that's a kiddo tough. That might be yeah. Cagey Lady that you sold to... Yeah. Uh, john and bunny kennedy yes yeah. you're right yeah we got a picture of her coming up i think once we get into the kiddo chapter but of course that's yeah. your daughter there on the far right and then you in the middle and that's larry holding the, yeah. the fraternity winner so yeah, yeah that's a cool picture yeah i love that mare shady 
shady lady. You had her when I was helping you out. You had her, and then you had Doc's design or uh, JBJ's design by dude. And let me tell yeah. you, both those mares, if they were colored, they would have been, you know, probably not brood mares. You know, oh, <laughs> they were probably. so good. <laughs> right, they were built so well, and uh, yeah, you, you did good with both those mares. So yeah. here's a snowstorm son. This is JBJ's firestorm. He made a little name for himself. Of course, Ruth Pico, I had him. I always remember her unloading him at two in the morning. She comes in in her green truck and trailer in, uh, in the middle <laughs> of the 90s. And my dad and I were probably the only people up. And uh, we helped her unload him. And I helped her unload some stuff. And she went and bought us breakfast. And uh, she had a roach mane on him, and it was like 95 or 90, you know, it was in the mid-90s. And she had his uh -huh. mane roached all the way except for a hand hand grip there, you know, <laughs> where the saddle of horn would be. And, uh, of course, he went on to be the sire of uh, his signal fire. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah he was grand champion gelding. So yeah, many he, times. You yeah. find firestorm in a lot of pedigrees. Um, yep. Uh, with Bob Roseland had what dirty snow, and uh, I think Charlie Phillips has that horse now. But um, I'm trying to think of one of these studs that Bob had was by Snowstorm too. Right. There's Signal Fire. Yep. Uh, dirty then, Dealer is Dirty Dealer by Firestorm. Dirty dealer. Yeah. <laughs> dirty it, Dealer. Of course, Terry's a good friend of mine now. I met him last year. Terry Thorson from Iowa. He's yep. such a good guy. He That's watches all the time, and uh, he has Dirty Dealer now. And uh, yeah, he's producing yeah. some good babies, and Bob did over the years. Of course, yeah. Rena just commented, ah, because she had, I believe she's in Indiana, isn't she? She had Firestorm, I think, no. didn't she? Okay, yeah. 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 And, uh, and then, of course, Aston's had his signal fire, and, uh, yep, he was a big, big gilding yeah. that did well. And, uh, yep, Terry just said his dirty dealer, so, yeah. Yep. And, and at HIS, yes, that was Ruth prefix for right. the later years of right. her life. Right. See, even Ruth Picoy, you can't get much more famous or a character than her. And she did <laughs> everything Picoys. Everybody knew the Picoys. And then all of a sudden she switched to his in her later years. And yes. uh, and then that became a pretty well-known prefix too. But, uh, right. You know, yeah. All right. Well, people, if you got to yeah. go pop some popcorn, we're still going here. We're talking to Jackie Guthrie and all her wonderful years and POAs. And we're probably halfway through the story or maybe a little more, but we're entering the kiddo tough years now. And yeah. uh, of course we're going to get to kiddo bounce, but I'm going to do that towards the end. So, cause I still consider that almost the current chapter you're in, you know, and yeah. his, his relatives. So, but uh, yeah. of course kiddo was bred by my family. So you have seen him pretty early on. And uh, one thing, Jackie, I got to brag on you a little bit, whenever like my dad would literally call on you, you know, to do something, you would come and do it to help promote POAs. Like we had a promotional show when we were still pretty green. Caswells were green in POAs and uh, not horse. They were knowledgeable on horses, but they were new into POAs. And we held that POA show in Dassel, Minnesota at the Caswells place. And you drove yeah. over with a tra couple. You kept them at our place. And then we went over the, the morning and showed them. And you spent the night uh, in your camper at our place. And kiddo would have been a yearling. Uh, that year yeah. and then you know you ended up owning him and partners with the Krugers and uh, stuff and of course you bred to him before you ever bought him you know but oh yeah right KG what lady I remember, I, what I remember about that show in Dasso was that kiddo stuff beat me <laughs> I hauled <laughs> over there I got beat yeah I tough. was showing him too and he you know kiddo wasn't known as being a show horse but he had such a pretty head and he was so smooth and several veterinarians told us he was the straightest legged pony they ever seen. You know, he had just straight legs. And uh, yeah. dad was worried because he walked funny as a baby. And he brought out some of the best vets in Minnesota because he said, if I'm going to go with this horse, I want to make sure he's right. And the one uh, guy said, you know, I think he's just so straight legged in the back. Well, then he ended up siren performance horses so and pleasure horses. Yeah. So uh yeah. here you are the day you you and krueger's bought him at the tulsa state yeah. fair yeah yeah, yeah that's, that was that's quite, a, that's quite a story and i know you know this story kent but there was four of us from the midwest and you know i was from wisconsin gordon was from uh, minnesota and then there was a couple of iowa people we were gonna we were not gonna let this stallion leave the midwest because there was somebody from california that was gonna 
take him to California. Uh-huh. I mean, he's going to buy kind of a thing, and right. we were not going to let that happen. <laughs> so the sale came, and, and Gordon and I and the other two people, well, the other two people backed out. Right. So Gordon and I said, well, we're still going to do what we set out to do. We're going to bring this horse back to the Midwest. Right. And he ain't going anywhere else, so no matter what it took. Right. So we got it done, and he was able to come and stay in the Midwest and sire. Right. That's well, you guys offered, you guys actually offered him to us to stand, but we were just getting started again for the second time. Right. And dad right. said, dad and I talked about it and we said, oh, we just can't do him justice. And we ended up getting him years later when he was yeah. an old man. He was 16 when we got him, but uh, 17 his first year he bred. But uh, yeah, I, but you know, the, not to get too too sentimental but when we had to sell this horse i cried you know i mean i was a teenage boy and we had to sell him because we you know we moved to town dad had some health problems and stuff which he recovered and we ended up going back to the country but uh i never wanted to sell a horse you know like him i mean i i knew he was going to be something special from the time i seen him you know but uh, and Gordon and I both agreed that if he was going to go anywhere again, he was going to go back to work. Right, and that yeah, we appreciate that. And then Gordon wrote me a letter, and uh, it was let's see, 2002, I think, is when when he wrote that letter. So almost 10 years after this, because he was still a pretty young stallion here, but rough and tough yeah. had named a name for himself and the Crisco kid with Tracy right. and there was some rumors that a couple like you were saying that he might get syndicated you know there was some big groups that were looking at him and then there was some other people of course Dean was looking at because he did so well with rough and tough but uh right. yeah Gordon wrote me that letter and said he was he was gonna sell kiddo because he was slowing down and uh he wanted to know if I knew anybody and and of course I called him within 30 seconds of opening the mail. You know, I, I don't think I was to the house yet from reading the letter. And then my brother pitched in with me and we bought him. And then of course I had him, he died in my arms in, in Cherokee here when he was yeah. 24 years old. So, but he had a good life. You know, he stopped breeding at 21, but uh, you know, everybody that owned that horse had success with him. You know, every, even the Caswells, of course, Unfortunately, Gordon Caswell passed away, you know, not long after they got him. But, you know, and Doc right. leased him and Doc leased him a couple yeah. times when he was an unproven two-year-old. Doc took him down to, uh, well, to Hazel Green when he just moved to that new place yeah. in Wisconsin. And he got rough and tough and some others. And then you, KG Lady, I always thought she should have did a little better. She wasn't that flashy, you know, but she had such a good neck and body. And, uh, oh, she was nice. Yeah, yeah. she was nice. That's the one John and Bunny Kennedy bought. Right, and we'll see a picture of her pretty quick. I'm going to run through some of these pictures here. The, kind of did a head study of Kiddo just because he was a big party. Or uh, Jeremy Stebbins actually took this picture of him uh, when he was probably, this would have been 06, so he was older when this picture was taken. And then there's his Hall of Fame plaque. Uh, I think I took, I know I took that picture, and then we enhanced the background of it. But uh Let's see. So here's an ad where you have Kiddo Tough and then JBJ's Rude Dude, JBJ's Sweet Dreams, and Nicole's riding her, and then you're showing at the World Show JBJ's Snow Angel. So oh, talk about yeah. an ad there. That's a, that's a pretty good group of ponies. Wow, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Snow wow. Angel was a snowstorm, and like I said, I always liked her, and she went on to have a good riding career. And uh, Yeah. He was owned by a family in Indiana. Right. Uh, yeah. And, of course, Sweet Dreams and Snow Angel were out of the same mare. They were both out yeah. of Doc's Double Sweet. And, uh, right. Yeah. So Sweet Dreams is a full sister to the legendary Crisco Kid, and she's also the full yeah. sister to the mother of the Silver Kid. So, yeah. 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 And Rude Dude was by that Touch of Tempina, without a Touch of Tempina. Right, and I got a picture of her coming up, I think, when you sold her. she I remember seeing her in her barn, your barn. She had a hip on her. Of course, she was well-bred, Gold Prince and, uh, what, Series yeah. Brushfire, wasn't she, I think? Yeah. Yeah. She, uh, was, she, was, a, she was a daughter of Series Brushfire. Right. So here we're looking at the Kennedys now when they bought, uh, of course, they bought a lot of good babies. They bought many Kiddo Tough daughters, and that was kind of became the nucleus of their program with Cody, some of his more famous ones. Not all of them. But he, 
I want you to know her belly wasn't that big. That's a shadow. That's a sh <laughs> Although, Jackie, that's one of your things that I always critique to you. You had bellies on your ponies. You did. Yeah, but, but hey. That's a Shadow. That's, That's a, a shadow. shadow. That is a. But one thing you never seen on Jackie's place was a rib. You never seen a rib on a horse. So, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No. So here's some pictures. You you're, you got some sunglasses on here, Jackie. You're being cool here in the '90s. You, this oh, is uh, JBJ's. Uh, oh, the one we just talked about, the kiddo daughter. So. Sweet uh, dreams. Sweet dreams. Yeah. This is her. I think you, didn't she win the Wisconsin Futurity or she did well? Oh, yeah. 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 She did. Yeah. Because yeah, there's there's quite a few pictures of her here, and I know that. Yeah, that barn, and then here she is at the Futurity. Larry bought her from you, didn't he? Or I think so. Yes, yeah, because he he's standing in this picture. Yeah. So, yeah, I showed yeah, her at cool. the World Show for you in the promo show, and she won the promo show, and you showed the one that won the Futurity months later, uh, the snowstorm filly, the black filly, and uh, she was second. And then the day, the next day, you won the show that counted, and I was second with this filly. So, yeah. <laughs> but but, we, we won, she won that Midwest Futurity that year, too. That's when, oh, you know, we had stuck to the Midwest Club, and right. we'd have Futurity every year. And, yeah. 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 And here she Love is in uh, Gordyville, Illinois. This would have been in ninety. Five, so she would have been a two-year-old, and that's Nicole Reidner. So I believe that's her. I know it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. her. Yeah, that's her. So, so here's a picture oh, of you and I in the same picture. This is that mare I alluded to earlier, JBJ. I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of the best smiles I've seen you uh, in a picture. You and of course you're just in your street clothes, your pink clothes, and. Uh, my pink shorts and my pink shirt. Yeah. yeah, and I'm wearing a pink shirt tonight. I didn't do that on purpose, but Larry actually showed that filly and won the fillies, and then I showed a kiddo colt for you the same day and won the colts, and uh, they were both by kiddo. And we won Marin Full, right? Yep, yep, that's that silver trophy right there you won. Yeah. We won Marin Full. Yeah. Larry and I showed, I think I led the Marin because I showed her in brood mares, and it was a really tough class. Uh, that skip a scarlet mare that Kinchlow's had, she was in her prime. Yeah, she was in there, and then Jan Rogers had, uh, or Dean, one of them had that Miss Gold Silk, or uh, or Prince's Prince's Gold Silk, a gold prince daughter. And her and I tied, and I lost the tiebreaker in the brood yeah. mares. But they did win the the mare in full. Yeah, Larry and I showed them. Yeah, so that would Is that, go ahead. What was the baby? That was. What was her name? Was that Step Aside Boys? Yep, JBJ Step Aside Boys. Step yep. okay. She's in some pedigrees, especially out west. Yeah. I've seen her in some pedigrees. She was a nice-looking filly, of course. And then I, I didn't condition her for this show. You and Nicole had the two babies. I just met you on the road somewhere. Mom dropped yeah. me off, I think, somewhere. I'm in my 20s already. But, yeah, my mom gave me a ride to, the, to meet you. But, anyway, uh, I did condition her for the Futurities. And she did well in the Red Earth, but then I think she got hurt in Tulsa. And uh, then she came up and took, I think, third at the select that Philly she, did. She got hurt the day before. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that because you told me when I got there what happened. And uh, and there's Larry winning the, that's the Jeff Kirkbride photo, winning photo there in 95. And then here you are in Des Moines when she, she still placed high, you know, in that Futurity. But, uh, she did, but she had a, she had injured her hind leg. Right, she had a she, she had, had a wound on her when she showed because we were nervous that they might kick her out of the class, you know. But here's the right. color photo of it. She's not standing as good as in this photo, but I included them both because you could see her color. So, yeah. yeah. But she was the cross between kiddo tough and then the a dude daughter, you know that. And yeah. you'd bred for the mother, I think, of that mare too. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. here's a shady lady colt. This is Kiddo My Dream. So you did the, not only a few people have done what you did in 1995. That was winning the Colton Phillies at the national show, which is now the Congress, uh, by the same stallion or the same yeah. breeder. So I think only one breeder had done it before and only two stallions had done it before. And they were both Black Hand and uh, Ladies Warrior. So pretty famous company there. And uh, yeah. yeah, you did it with, and this was a nice looking colt. Jerry King ended up, buying him and yeah. having him for a stay and kiddo my dreams yeah yeah he and was, i see him some pedigrees 
every now and then. Yeah. You know, uh, Janet um, from Colorado. Aaron's. Jeanette, Jeanette she's, Aaron's, she's, yeah. She's had some daughters of him. Right. But she's free, breeding program. One yeah, night, I'll home. never forget it, I was mowing the grass, and it was almost dark, and they yelled for me, you got a phone call, and I come and go up to the house to answer. This would have been in the probably the late 90s. He was born in 95, and it's Jerry King on the phone, and I always got along with Jerry King great. And uh, he said, I got to ask you a question about my stag, and you know Kiddo Tough better than anybody, and that's before we'd bought him back. And He said about every three out of four colts uh, have a line going down their back. Where's that coming from? And I said, well, kiddo's mother had that. And he go, what? You know, so he was glad he called me. So, yeah, but I guess, I don't know if Jeanette, if she watches this or not, but she might remember his Colts having, because Jerry told me at the time that it was like three quarters of his foals had a line going down them. So, uh, uh. yeah. So here's Rude Dude as a yearling in 1993. He, his claim to fame, I would say, is his neck. He had one of the best necks ever put on a colt uh, for sure and uh, and of course he kept him a stallion for a while too and it just didn't get fat he had a skinny made neck you know and and you know the, the story about rude dude is because again i'll say we didn't have any genetic testing in those days and he was out of touch of tentina kind of colored like she was too right by doc tough dude and what I didn't know at the time is he's he's homozygous. He was homozygous. Right. But we bred him to some quarter mares, and the, Susie Dish bred him to some quarter mares. He put color on everything. Right. And we couldn't we couldn't figure out why. <laughs> well, now today we figured it now out. Now you know, yeah. He was homozygous. Right. And he did roam so, too. Yeah, Here he yeah. is as a the next year as a two year old. He bodied up a lot, but you could see there. He's Ronin, and he looks a little more homozygous there, you know, yeah. basically a homozygous Ronin. But I always liked his mother, Touch of Ten Tina. She was yeah. a she was a nice mare that you had, and yeah. yeah, she she was a beauty. She was a beauty. Yeah, and then you bred her to dude. I think this is her here in '94. Didn't you sell her with a mare in full with a baby? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know who that baby is. I know that's Kim Singer. I think they Kim bought Singer. him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was a colt. It was a stud colt okay. she had. And yeah, she was uh, quite a mare. Got but a little anyway, bit of shadow yeah. on that baby, too. That bit, The belly's got a little bit of shadow there, Jackie. <laughs> thank, thank you. So anyway, <laughs> you know, that was a beautiful mare. That's oh. how she tend to the mare. And uh. she was in full when Kim bought her. And the next spring, she had a set of twins. Oh, okay. And Kim lost them all and lost the mare. Oh, wow. I mean, it lost both of them and lost the mare. So right. that was kind of a tragedy. Yeah. I know that Sud, Sud Polk went on to be a stallion for somebody. Okay. Down there in that area for a while. I lost track of him after a while. But right. anyway, yeah. My brother and I ended up buying a mare. He came to me at a sale and he said, I seen a yearling filly is in the sale, and we didn't scout her out or anything. It's when we had kiddo back, and he was looking for some mares of his own because I dad had some, and I had some, and he was starting to put some together. And it was uh, Touch of Tina's Tabasco Twist. And oh, yeah. And Borjans brought her in as a yearling, and she was uh, related to this. I think she was a rude dude daughter, I think. Yeah, yeah. she was. And then out yep. of one of Marlene's, and I told my brother, well, I – I don't even have to know who her mother is because Marlene has all good mares. I said, and her yeah. dad had the best neck ever put on a stay. And I said, go ahead. And I said, I'll go in partners with you. And I think dad might even threw in too. And we bought her and she ended up having a full that Rupplinger's bought from us. And, uh, you know, Lee bought for Sammy. He just didn't grow up very, the Tabasco kid was his name. He didn't grow up tall enough. He was short. Every once in a while, kid oh. would throw a real short one. Because the mare was yep. 55 or so, but she was she didn't have the body that uh, Tina did, but she uh, no. was built a lot like her. She profiled a lot like her, not quite as nice a headed and not as muscular, but she ended up having some babies for people, I know. And, uh, yeah. yeah. See, there's stories. We're connected in different stories quite a bit. It's kind oh, of funny. <laughs> <laughs> <We care. laughs> So you're going to have to help me with this one, and I know I didn't lead you good enough, but this is at the 1998 
Futurity and Sale in Des Moines, and you're standing here in, at the backdrop, and I don't remember who this is. I'm drawing a blank. It might oh. be a gotta look. I'm not sure. No. no. This, this, it was a Philly. Yeah. And, oh, what was her name? <laughs> when I seen this picture, I'm like, this is one that I know in 98, I could have told you her whole pedigree. But And, and I kept I kept her. I right. kept her because she was homozygous. You know, right. we kind of figured out the homozygous thing. By then. By yeah. then. We were, we were figuring it out. But I kept her. I don't remember whatever happened to her, though. I'm trying to remember, too. But maybe it'll come back to us or somebody might help us out that's watching. But yeah. it was a good-looking yeah. filly. I know that. So yeah, she was the filly you nice had talk. in 96, it would have been, was the one by out of Crystal Snow and by Salty Gotteluk. She was colored similar to this, but not built like this. But oh, she, yeah. she had that color on the hip and was similar. But I know that you wasn't know, this one. Uh, you know, you know who I, this might be is JBJ's kiss this. Oh, I think that's who it is. I think you're right. JBJ's yeah. Kiss this. Yeah. I think I showed her for you too. I don't think I got her ready, but I think I let her in. Cause my dad said, you're going to lead a horse named kiss this. <laughs> and I said, why not? Why not? Yeah, so, that's what it is. That's kiss yeah. this. Okay. Kiss this. Well, now you're holding, you're in the same outfit, same day at the yeah. 98. And this is a yearling, obviously. Got some chrome on this one. It's a colt or a gilding. It's a gel. He was a gelding. Okay. I can't remember his name, but it was a Doc Tufts dude. Seems to me it was a dude gelding. Okay. Was he a brother to? Maybe he was a brother to the the weanling that Doc had. I don't know if he was or not, but well, he was a half brother for sure, but. Yeah, because the socks are always a giveaway. Right, you know, right. <laughs> it, it For sure. Could have, could have been something out of Miss Crystal Snow by Dude. I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember so, either. But anyway, they were good. they were worthy of adding, you know, you took a picture of them, so they were good POAs. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So here's one I know some people might not remember, but he had a body on him. You sold JBJ's classical lark at one of our... Wilmer sales, one of those Candy yeah. Ohio sales. He was by uh, something classic and out of Miss Crystal Snow. Yeah, so. I went, I took, took her down to, to Bob Roseland's and bred her to something classic. And yeah. This is the colt she has. And, and uh, uh, Larry Gibson bought this pony for his grandson, Ty. Heck That's, and right. Liable. That's right. Because I think he topped they, the sale at that sale. And they, and they still have him. Really? He's over in Minnesota. They were never selling, oh. Cause, you know, because Ty really, he showed a little bit, but then he didn't show anymore, and right. I thought he'd be a good pony for somebody to go show, but they, Tony wouldn't sell him. I wonder if Bob even knows that story, because, of course, something classic is a Wheez Camp stay, and that Bob had for a long time, beautiful yeah. horse, and, uh, yeah. of course, he's passed away now, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know if he knows that story or not. Hopefully, he's watching tonight, or we'll watch this and see it. So yeah, yeah. There's an up close picture, same picture. This was taken out of the catalog uh, that we made. We made a color catalog. We thought we were really doing something special back yeah, then. Yeah, that's cool. You were. <laughs> were. Well, you came and read pedigrees. I remember our neighbor was the auctioneer, and he's like, "Well, you people are into these pedigrees because you were reading them, and I was reading them, and we were serious, you know. And, uh, of course, Doc brought some nice ones, and you and Nicole brought some nice ones. Uh, a mare we're going to talk about later a little bit, Winchester's Valentine, she went through that sale. And uh, yeah. I think, didn't Larry buy her at that sale? Then you got her from yeah. Larry? Yeah. No, I oh. didn't get her from one, but oh. she went through that sale, and Larry bought her. Okay. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I had so much fun at that sale, and the people from Oklahoma, Sue brought a whole trailer load of your sale. She did, yep, the Bagwells, and, and of course, Lynn did stuff. both years. Lynn, the second oh, year, yeah. he no-sailed about three of them, and Jeremy ended up buying all of them, I think. There was sequins and blackout, and uh, yeah. So, and then the year before, or two years before, we had the sale in 04 and then again in 06. And it took me yeah. two years to recover. To have, I couldn't have one in 05. But uh, yeah. anyway, uh, my brother had bought a couple salty mares in 04, and then Jeremy bought them in, in 06. Uh -huh. 
So now we're going to kind of, instead of chapters, I ran out of time and, and energy, really, frankly. Yeah. And Opal's going to be in a big group because I know who she is. But there's going to be yeah. hit and miss ones. We might be 10 years off, Jackie, on some of these pictures. But you can just comment on them, and I'll try to lead you a little better on them. So. Yeah, this, this is the kiddo bones. This is the, from his first full crop. Okay. And this is the one Mullenbach bought okay. that they showed successfully okay his first full crop yeah. with you after you got him so yeah 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 because <laughs> he was the impulsive kid i say he's like the new kiddo bounce now nikki in wisconsin's got him and you know he didn't have a lot of foals his first 10 years and now he's yeah. gonna have some nice babies and the and kiddo bounce was the same way you know out of left yeah. field here he comes as a 10 year old and now he's you know uh, one of the leading sires so and i have uh, to say something about kiddo bounce because um, his breeder was Gordon Kruger. Right. Who, who was my partner with Kiddo Cup. You right. Know? So I thought that was cool. And when I had been away from POAs for a few years, I still had POAs, but I wasn't showing too actively. Right. But anyway, when I got a place again and had a place to have ponies, um, and the conversation that Susie Drish and I had, she said, if you could just make up a stallion, buy a stallion, what, what would you want him to be? What would your ideal stallion be? And I said, well, he'd be small. Right. And he'd have to be a few spots. And he'd have to be good-headed. <laughs> and I said, I would want a son of Kittle Cup. Right. And Susie says, I think I know where there is one. <laughs> Susie did good there, yeah. yeah. She, and I've all dropped my teeth, but she did. She knew where he was, where Kittle Bonk was. Right. And, uh, he got that deal done, and uh, he came to Wisconsin. Right, and the so rest is history. Good. And he's a few yeah. spot. He's short, and he's good headed. He's a carbon yeah. copy of Kiddo, except he's like four or five inches shorter than Kiddo. So you yeah. actually could breed him to mares that you never could breed Kiddo to, because uh, he's right. just that much shorter. And then Kiddo's on his bottom side too. It was a granddaughter of Kiddo that he, he bred. So you really got the homozygous going there. And uh, he's uh He's one of the few line bred kiddo top right. stallions out there. I don't know that there was ever any other line bred because it was kiddo top bred one of his granddaughters. That's right. Heaven O. Yep. Heaven O. Bounce. Yep. She was named after the year Gordy, or Gordon uh, Caswell passed away. Yeah. Yeah. And so they yeah. named her Heaven O. Yep. So, well, we're going to have kiddo bounce pictures here, not too many, but okay, okay well, that's fine. But we'll get into him, and we got a whole bunch of kiddo bounce babies we're going to show. But now we're looking at Tammy showing a really cool baby. This isn't kiddo bounce. This is something way different. So this was a typey baby here, and hopefully oh, you're... Yeah, that's, that's locked and loaded. That's, that's locked amazing. and loaded. So he was grand champion as a yearling, right, Stallion? Yeah, yeah. He was. I remember commenting on this picture. I think I wrote you on Messenger or Facebook or something because that would have been what fourteen or fifteen somewhere in there. But I yeah. said this this head and neck. I said he's gonna he's gonna do something. So when at that show that year, you came and got me as soon as you seen me and said you got to come look at my yearling. <laughs> and then he <laughs> went grand the next day. So yep, locked and JBJ's locked and loaded. Yep. So the the story with him is. You know, Winchester's Valentine, I'm going to go back to her because Larry Gibson had bought her. And he had showed her quite extensively as a yearling. And he got her ROM halter on. And then he ended up selling her to Stephen Brown in Texas. Okay. And Stephen had her for several years, raised some, you know, ponies out of her and whatnot. Right. And she, she came to the international sale. Okay. And I hadn't really looked at her before. I was sitting there, and she came in the ring. And I went, oh. <laughs> you know, she, she had a, she wasn't in the best shape. She was pretty rough, to be okay. honest. And she was thin, and she didn't bring much money. But I knew she was a diamond in the rough. Right. There were things I liked about her really well. So I, that's when I bought her. Okay. And then I bred her bred her to presidential order. Presidential order is a full brother to certain potential. Right. And, and very, very well bred. And yeah. the, the grand dam of locked and loaded 
is a uh, mayor that she might be in the AQHA Hall of Fame. She's had so many. She's got such a, such a tremendous production record. Right. But anyway, but anyway, so Winchester Valentine had locked and loaded, and then we bred her back to um, Kittlebone because I wanted. <laughs> I was trying to get small homozygous mares. Right. So of course I got small homozygous. Colts, yeah. Yeah, and uh, actually the small homozygous mare that I have now is, you know, adorable, is uh, out of that black and white leopard mare, Strand of Pearls. Strand of Pearls. I think I have a full yeah. brother to her in here. He's a baby. You sent me his picture when he was a weanling, yeah. and he's as wide as he is tall. He's only like a couple weeks old, and, and her oh, leopard yeah. hip is in the background, and it says Strand of Pearls, and in uh, yeah. Kiddo Bomb. I remember you contacted me and you said, do you think I'm crazy for breeding like star kid daughters and, <laughs> and little things to Kiddo Bonds? And, and I said, no, I think you're going to save the breed by doing it, you know, and because you can get those homozygous little mares. Well, like you said, you got few spots and leopard colts, but you did get some fillies. So, uh, I, I got one and that's got that one. Yeah. And she'll be the last one to ever leave my place. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and we're gonna get to her too. She's she had yeah. a baby well, this year, right? <laughs> well, she had one two years ago. Her oh. first one was by kissing the girl. Okay. And, and he was reserved at Congress as a baby, but then he went and won most colorful. And the pair won mare and foal. That's right. And Kidorful won brood mares. So they had a pretty good show. Right. I think I got a picture of that. Yeah. There's kiddo bounce. There's kiddo bounce. I skipped a couple. I skipped JBJ's Outback Jack. You're not the breeder of him, but your oh. your things on him. So I had him in here. That's a story from the Wilmer sale as well. So, yeah. uh, but here's kiddo bounce, and uh, of course he, you know, he was never fitted for halter or anything. He's just an old no. stallion that, you know. But and here he is with the. Uh, I think the day you hauled some mares out to Indiana, I believe, is when this picture was taken. So he's definitely older here. I think that's Mr. Zom holding him. I might be wrong, but, and then you, yeah. 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 That was taken a year or two ago. Right. And okay. he's 22 this year. He's 22, yep. He's a, yep, for sure. He's a 2000 model, so. Yeah. Yep. You know, he's had a wonderful home with Zoms, and they just, you know, they've taken such great care of him. He's part of the family. and right. We got to, you know, meet each other when they bought one of his daughters at the sale, and they supremed her, Maddie. I want, to, I don't know, remember registered name offhand, but that's Maddie. Okay. That was Bob, that was Bob's favorite. Okay, they're saying that's Larry, your husband, in the picture. So he's got a coat on, so he looks a little bigger. So it was Larry. <laughs> that was Larry, I, and I wondered if that was him or. You know, I just got out of it about the time the Zoms were getting in, so I've never met them. Yeah. I know that sounds unbelievable, but, I, you know, we've just never crossed paths. But here's the Strand of Pearls and Kiddo Bounce Colt a couple days old, yeah. and he's and wide. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I was the breeder on this colt, and, uh, but he was born at the pony farm because they had bought that mare from me. Okay. So, And they did sell him. I think he went to Illinois. I can't quite remember, but... Um, He's a full brother to JBJ. Kidorable. Kidorable, yeah. He, he he's a sixteen. Thing. She must be. What is she? A fifteen? What year was she born? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She's seven here. Okay. Archie. Just yeah. Jessica says Archie. Archie. Oh yeah. yeah. And Maddie, sweet Archie. That's that's the POA Zoms bought for me at the sale. It kind of where we met and where they, you know, yeah. kind of. JBJ sweetheart kid, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was that uh, that art breeding in the yep, yeah, on the state of the art breeding on the bottom yeah. side, the Appaloosa, yeah, yeah. 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 Now this one right. I didn't do this, but this was we used this for last week's show, and uh, I know oh. his name spelled wrong, but this is JBJ's kid uh, prophet. I know there's two D's in there, but they sent this to me like this, so I wasn't going to edit it. But he's doing okay. well, and you know he's in Oklahoma at Ashley's stable, so that's why he was in last week's episode. Oh, but, oh. Yeah. Awesome. He, he was another silk black. Yeah, he's, yeah. 
and his his mother was a black state of the art daughter. Oh, okay. All right. And that was that was her first fall. Okay. All yeah. Right. He was a nice baby. Okay. Nice baby. I'm going to get into some babies now, Jackie, that I don't really know that well. So in the mid 2000s, probably. So hopefully, you know, them. and Tammy's got to be on here helping us out, too. That was the deal. So (laughs) this this is the filly and she's, what is she, two this year? Okay. She's she's by JBJ's looking bright eyes. Oh, okay. Okay. Out out of a daughter of Kiddo Bone. Oh, cool. Frost, well, she's out of Frost and Elegant. Oh, okay. Her name is Elegant. She's Elegant. out of Elegant. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And I don't have a picture of David Stein on here, but I do have a picture of a Colt he raised, the one that's out west. He's that real cute stallion. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's such a cool little dude. He's He's got muscles coming out of his ears, but he looks like he could move, too. You know, he just looks like a – he reminds me of, like, a drift car. You know, he's kind of just moves like poetry. And uh, yeah. we'll see a picture of him. But uh, okay, I think this is the little stay in here. Uh, you're in this picture. Tammy's holding him. Uh, Bianca's in here, and Lindsay's arm is in this picture. This is the little stay in, I think. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's the stallion that I own with the Daryl Malak family. Frodo. Now, is that kid? No, this is Kid Valentino. Kid Valentino. Okay. Yeah, All right. Valentino. Yeah, he yeah. was four that year, and he won the uh, small stallions. 50, yeah, fifty-one and under stallions. Yeah. yeah, and he looks a lot like Kittle Bones, I think. And uh, he, he's a great mover for his size. He's as flat kneed as they come, and he's got a great top line. He's a Winchester's uh, Valentine's son, right? Right. Right. He's a half brother to Lock and Loaded. Right. Uh, all, everything that mare has ever had has had the most strong top line, just amazing, and they're never out of balance. Right. I mean, even feelings, you're not never going downhill. They just they grow up that way. They're just very balanced, and that comes from the mother. Okay. Oh yeah, here's a chocolate. This is a snowstorm daughter. Okay, this I figured it was. Yeah. Yeah, and or a silver bay, I should say. <laughs> right. This one, this mare was out of a mare that Carmen Hoffman had had bred. Oh, okay. So she was an Appaloosa mare um, by St. Nick Snowstorm. Okay. Was that a Stan Me Grand relative, probably? That, yeah. Yeah. It was a okay. Grand. Well, this is a typey yeah. looking mare, too. I, I included it in there. You sent it with the group of 100 photos or so. You sent me, you know, 80 yeah. to 100. And I said, well, I think it's a snowstorm, but I just, this is one of them I put towards the back end and just so we could see her. And, uh, and I saw her, I think, at the international sale, too, and she was uh, really, really a pretty mare. Right. And just so people know, tonight, you know, it seems like we're talking about every single POA you bred, but in reality, this is just an overview. That's not an encyclopedia of you bred a lot more okay. than what we're going to show, you know. Oh, what I mean? And yeah. someone, too, you know, they, some of them were very good or went on to be good breeders. And, uh, we, you know, we, we'd be here till 1 o'clock if we talked about every single one of them but i think we put together a fairly good show here here's uh this is tammy right in 2016 this is tammy with uh kid valentino okay that's him as a baby yeah that's him as a baby okay so they call him rudy too because of valentino so yeah 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 and i think this is him out in the ring uh out in the pen in uh, tulsa Probably Tammy setting him up once it catches oh, up. Yeah, yep, that's, yep. Him. that's yeah. him. That's him, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's pretty stout for his height for sure. So, yeah, yeah, and then being a few spot, that's good. Now, I got some pictures of some of your mares, I think, okay. and uh, they might be gone now or whatever, but they were mares you had fairly recently, I believe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But uh, she was my favorite quarter mare. She was the dam of uh, obvious kid. Okay. Um, there was what she, she had like four or five holes by kiddo bounce, and every one won 
their screaming class at, at Congress. Okay, you, inter- you when you first got Kid Obans back, she's one of the early mayors you bred to him, right? And you, she, yeah, yeah, that she really is. got him on the tr- on the map. You know, this and mayor. She, and she's an obvious prophet, bred mayor. Okay, um, but she was NN. She's NN, so okay. she didn't have a HYPP. But uh, oh yeah, she was just the sweetest mayor. I just love this mayor. She okay. always had a good fun. Right. Yeah. Now I don't know who this is. It's a leopard. Uh, oh, Courtney from Wisconsin's holding, holding it. In uh, probably uh, that's probably my uh, my my daddy's loaded. Okay. And that's a locked and loaded. Yes, this okay. is a locked and. Okay. And she is. She's owned by uh, Anthony Mallock. Oh, okay. You should right. probably see her in the show pen this year on the saddle, I should say. Okay. And she's out of Courtney's old show mare, um, a Sunday info. Oh, really? I remember that mare, yep. It had yep. all the chocolate babies. Right, yeah. yep. The first impulse daughter, short mare. Right. Here's the yep. photo you talked about earlier, and this is this is the purple shirt day or purple jackets and shirts yeah. that you didn't plan. Uh, it's we just didn't. because you guys are such Vikings fans. That's how it happens. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you know I am. Uh, yeah, w- yeah. Wisconsin, Indiana, and Iowa, and y'all wore purple. There's got to be a reason. So I don't yeah, think it's K State. So uh, I th- I think we were all hoping to, for great things. I don't know what that was. But, uh, yeah. yeah, this is adorable first baby, and that was by kissing the girls. And Katie Muller Train owns him, and he's out in Oregon. Okay. And he's two. He's two this year, but they're gonna break him out and show him under saddle before they breed with him. Uh, okay. Well, that's but good. He's not, he's not standing or anything yet. And he was, you know, you gotta think the mare here. She's only fifty and a half inches. <laughs> right. So that ba- baby was a little baby. He is a little so baby. You can tell he's a little baby. Yeah, for sure. He's not gonna get very big. Yeah. No. So here's your grand champion stallion again. This was in 15. Yeah. 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 That's a nice picture. Yeah, that's a good picture of you guys. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. (laughs) Jimmy had a lot of fun. All right. She did a great job. She did a great job. That's why I had her in the beginning of your show. I could have had 100 people come on, and I said, you know, Tammy is a big part of the, the latest part of your career, the last 10 years or so, and... And I wanted to honor I, her for yeah. doing things too, like the magazine and the Breeders Challenge for charity. Yeah, you know she's a big part of that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I couldn't have done it without Tammy. Well, that's cool. That's cool. She's a big part of my success for sure. Right. Well, we still this got is, quite a few pictures to go here. So this is the what the silver black again. That's okay. Out of the, the art daughter. Okay. Um, that's him. That was him. Yep, that's him. Uh, okay. Now, I know this baby, I believe you lost this baby, the loud-colored, I think he's a bay, had the big spots, just a beautiful. Oh, yeah, he's a locked and loaded colt that uh, we bought last year and planned on showing this year, but uh, unfortunately, he, there was, he, I can't think of the name of it, but anyway, okay. there was a few colt from Iowa that all had the same thing. Okay. And uh, Christine Keller's, Colt had it too, but he lived. Okay. He was a few that lived. There was some other. I know Dean Damon lost a couple. He lost ours. There was someone else too that lost one. So. Okay, well, that's sad. But we were, we were, yeah, we really liked this Colt, but Oakley was, was his name Oakley. Yes. Yeah. Oakley. Okay. Yeah. Well, now I'm showing JBJ's. I think loaded by design is this Philly's name. That's loaded by design. Yeah. Yes, it is. And that's out of a salty bread mare. Okay. Again, um, one that Lynn bred, one that I, that Bob Zom actually bought her at the sale. Okay. And when she was a weanling, I told Bob, I said, <laughs> you buy that filly, buy that filly. <laughs> so he and he did. listened to it, yeah. <laughs> and then when she was two, he gave her to me. Oh, wow. And so I took her and then I bred her to lock and loaded and Lucy was her first full okay and she had the black, black and white full for next year and uh then i gave her back to bob <laughs> you guys just a, exchanging stuff yeah i gave her back to bob and then they bred her to uh jbj's uh chocolate zipper 
Okay. And he had, he had a real nice, uh, I think it was a colt, but it was a Chaz baby. I took year. some pictures of this mare at the show. I really liked her. She was so smooth. I took quite a few pictures of her when she was out in the halter class. Uh, I don't know if any of them made this tonight, but uh, you sent me this, so I showed this one for sure. But, uh, but again, this mare is so balanced. It's right. Such a strong top line. And, yeah, balanced and smooth for sure. And yeah. so that's what Tammy and I are seeing on these locked and loaded baits. Well, that's good. Is that, is yeah. that balanced? And right. Of course, you're crossing him to good mares too, so that helps. But he's a nice guy. I mean, he didn't win grand by accident, you know. So this is the picture I, I cropped this picture earlier. This is the full version of it uh, that yeah. I led the show off with because it was you and Tammy. So, uh, but this was and one obvious of kid. Obvious kid. Obvious kid. Okay. And he was out of that quarter mare that you showed earlier. I okay. My favorite. Mare. Right. That was his, his mama. That was the first cross between kiddo balls. And her, okay, and um, or I second. I'm sorry, second. he was the second cross, but he, he was really a nice colt. And he now is in Michigan with um, the Haas. Well, Holly, right? Haas. It isn't Haas anymore. Right. But her daughter. Her daughter. Wow. Things come around daughter. from totally uh, <laughs> macho to yeah to him. So that's funny. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Bruno. They call him Bruno. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Well, this is a Winchester's Valentine. Okay. Uh, mayor, uh, called Kiss on the Spot. He's oh. like kissing the girl. Oh, okay. Out of Winchester's Valentine. All right. And this is this is when Tammy had her at the fraternity when she was a baby. Okay. All right. Yeah. And here's that little mare, uh, Kidorable. I think's her name. The little. I might be wrong, but I think that's her. Lindsay showing her. Probably. I, yeah. yeah, that's it. That's, that's her. It. She, yeah. she was four that year, but Lindsay showed her, and she finished up her last few grands and reserves, and she got her R1 halter. Okay. Yeah, so. she's another one that's wide as she is tall, that, that mare. She, she's... Is as, she is as wide as she is tall. Yes, <laughs> she is. She is. Now I got she's a throwback a... here. This is 07, and this is your daughter, Showing one, and I should know who this is, but I'm having a blank. Oh, that was a Philly. That okay. was a mare. Okay. This might have been a crystal mare. I don't know. Mm. No? No, she was out of that double L. Dickens daughter I oh, had. Okay. All right. I, re I don't remember who the sire was on her, but okay. yeah. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I told you we're gonna bounce around. No pun intended, but we're gonna bounce around on these pictures. From you know, I I got most of the stuff early on, but after kiddo bounce, now I got some stuff mixed in here. So. Yeah, and this is the full brother to Autumn Riley uh, Mayor. Okay. And and uh, he he was sold right after the sale in Paturity. I think he's two this year. Two or three this year. Well, he's he typey too. He's got a neck on him. Whew. Yeah, and he's um he went back to Iowa, so I'm okay. hoping they show him one of these days. Right. Here's Rudy again posing with the oh. statue. There's quite a few pictures of Rudy in here. So the name of the the black bolt was Davy Day's riding shotgun. Riding shotgun? <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's a good name. I don't think yeah. I ever heard that. So Yeah. Riding shotgun. Yeah, yeah okay. this, this is uh, Kid Valentino again. Right. Okay, this is one that uh, Zoms had, I believe. This is a kiddo bounce, I'm pretty sure, a filly. She's at the Color Breed, Color Congress, Color Breed Congress show. Oh, Maddie, that's Bob and Maddie. Yeah, yeah. they went to that, uh, yeah, Color Breed Congress that November, and I believe she's a yearling here. She looks like it, yeah. She yeah. has such a gorgeous head and neck, and she was just, just, she's a fabulous mare. Right, yeah, she looks like it. She, I knew that was Bob, so yeah, and then it's at the Congress, so, uh, or at the Color, Color Congress. Uh, yeah, let's see, they, this is one of your babies. I don't think this is, let's see. And Maddie's a supreme champion, too. They finished her supreme championship. Okay. That's Sweetheart Kid? Is that? Yeah, 
Yeah, yep. Maddie's sweetheart kid. That's what kind of got you and Zoms together was that filly, you said, right? Yeah. 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 She is a beautiful mare. I remember when you when she was born because of the, the Minnesota connection with the mares you, you got out of, by that stallion. So. And she's a silver bay, too. Her mother is a state-of-the-art daughter, also a bay one. Right. And uh, so she's a sil- Maddie's a silver bay. Okay. So okay, some, this, this is a kiss in the girls, Colt? Yeah. Okay. Tammy, tell me his name again, because we called him Teddy. <laughs> and this is the one Katie Muller train bought. Okay. And this is the baby that was in the picture with the, he won most colorful with for this ribbon. Yeah. Yeah, okay. He He's out of uh, Kid Orville. Yes, yeah. he's out of Kid Orville. Okay. Now, this is a picture I took. This is uh, the Loaded by Design. And I took this picture at the show last year, I believe. So I cropped it. I zoomed it in. But I took about 50 pictures of halter horses out there, or horses in the halter class, I should say. And uh, yeah. see this mare's top line and just the way her, you know, her hip going around her tail and everything. I just liked her. And at first, I don't think I knew she was one of yours. You came over and told me she was. So I wasn't yeah. pinpointing her because she was one of yours. So here's and a little, so, go ahead, Jackie. I was so proud of Autumn that this is, Ruthie was a yearling, and that right. was Autumn's very first National Congress show. Well, she acted very good. Yeah, I wouldn't have known that. So, And yeah. she, she won in hand trail with her that year, too. Oh, okay. She had just a flawless goal with that mare. Right. So but she'll be riding her this year. Good. Well, the locked and loaded's are making, they're going to make a name for themselves on the rail, I think. So, yeah. I think that are, <laughs> I hope that there's not too many of them out there. But um, right. this one born the other day, I sold a bread mare to Jill Nelliman in Missouri, and she had a black and white, black blanket and stud fold. Oh, wow. She look, looks really nice, so we'll see. Good. So, here's a little fuse spot with the big blaze. That's Kid Valentino. And that's again. him as a baby. Okay, that's oh, him. Yeah. That's a young, young old picture. Old. Yeah, he's he's pretty young there. That's probably one of the first pictures of. Him. Oh, we'd seen him already. Uh, he's, he was at Jessica Drish's then because he actually was you know born in February okay. and uh, needed the warm place. And then we fed the mare back. Yeah, riding shotgun. Oh yeah, prophetic razzle. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's played a part in your uh, breeding program, I would say. Huh? He played so. it. We well, played a big part because he's uh, the sire of Opal's mother. Right. Of Opal's mother. Yep. And she was PJ's yeah. last prophetess. Was the mother right? Was her name? No, no. no. That was a, my first mare. That, that was your that first was mare. Good. Okay, that was the, the obvious daughter. prophet daughter. Yeah. He's an obvious prophet daughter. Yeah. yeah. This is, this gravel. guy's the mother to the to Opal's, or he's the sire to Opal's mother. Yeah. Yeah, he's the grandsire, and yeah. he is a double bred obvious prophet. Okay. And I really, that's why I love the obvious prophet so much because I've had two of those mares, and right. they've both been tremendous producers. You right. Know? But Opal's mother, um, she had um, the one by Kittlebounce, and then. She died later that summer, and uh, we think she had cancer. She just oh, looked wow. kind of laid up and died. Oh, that's too bad. So we never got another one out of her, but we got Opal. So That's her in the background of this picture. Opal's a, a weanling here, pretty big weanling, and then her mother's next to her, of course. And uh, you'll see it here oh, in a yeah. minute. Yeah. Yep. So that was, was her only summer. baby you got out of her? Was that one? Wow. That was it, there laid down and died later that year but she was born solid you know and i Tammy <laughs> says well, she doesn't have any color and i said well she has to have color <laughs> she has to have color <laughs> that's funny yeah. and then and of course she she's there she is as a yearling now she's getting more color as a yearling and she she's did starting... co- and she did color up enough as a baby to get regular papers too she when did. that baby baby hair came off there was just right. full of white just full of white hair right and she just keeps getting a little lighter with age. She's a she's a yeah. classic roan, basically. Uh, yeah. Here's Tammy showing her. Yeah. 
Yeah, we got a lot of pictures of her. Like I said, I could recognize her, so I grouped them together. That's one thing. I did. There might be a stray picture of her because there's so many of them. I included almost every one that I've seen of her because she's photo worthy, you know. So yeah. she's won a lot of those statues there. So you know, she was one of those that, um, and she didn't do all that well as a, her yearling year. You know, she got beat quite regular. Right, but. She, she just got better and better and better every year. She did. She got. Yeah. She's getting wider. <laughs> I think she's. But she smoothed out on the top line, which a lot of them do. But yeah, uh, she's a lot smoother now. She's caught up to her head and her ears for sure. And, uh, and she yeah, just really came into herself by the time she was a three-year-old. Right. I, I think. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's Keith Longacre, and uh, that was her. I think her first grand okay. champion. Yeah. Did he show her once or twice at the national show? He showed her twice. Twice, okay. He showed her twice, and then Lindsay showed her last year. Lindsay showed her last year, yeah. Yeah. There she is the second year that she, and you can tell she's deeper in the second year she won because it says two times grand champion, so I know that's the second year, and that's okay. – Long oh, yeah. with her there, yeah. But just you can tell the heart girth, even though it's a front picture, and the d depth of the chest, and uh, she and just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Yeah, she was four here. She was a four-year-old. Okay. And so she really, yeah, yeah. matured. Yeah. You know, if you look at that yearling photo and this photo side by side, you can see how much she matured. Right. Definitely. Yeah, that was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, here she is with the three ladies, uh, Tammy, you, and Lindsay, and uh, four oh, yeah. ladies, actually. And uh, that's the three-time. That's history right there. That's a history photo because she's tied now for the record for mares. Yeah. Uh, and, and look at that. We had no purple in this photo. <laughs> well, <laughs> Tammy tried. So it was faded. Pink is just faded out purple. So, and teal, you know, teal's left out in the sun too long. So I won't make any package jokes because you guys have beat, beat the Vikings too long. Well, the Vikings are spending a lot of money this year, Jackie. So it might be, might be different. So. It might be. I thought yeah. Aaron Rodgers would follow Brett and come over to the Vikings. He was so unhappy in Wisconsin, but he stayed. He stayed home. So. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I took this picture, and it's not the best picture in the world. Her ears weren't up, but uh, I took this one from the stands this last year. So, because you don't see a lot of profile pictures of her, but again, yeah, it's not yeah. a professional picture. But she still looks awesome. You know what I mean? And yeah. you can see her top line. Uh, but, yeah. And then there's the picture that I cropped for the, the one thing. That's just a cropped professional photo there. I just like to show the forearms and the gaskins and the inside gaskins of this mare. Uh, she's she's definitely uh, quarter horse influence. Oh, Jackie, we got a third party here. No Packers, go Bears. So that's uh oh, we're getting. <laughs> the bucks that's, are gonna get you all. Oh, we'll see about that. Thing. I bet we don't get any uh, Lions fans talking so they're probably watching but they're gonna stay quiet so uh, I, mean, I felt bad for them last year yeah they try so exactly. hard and they just never do it so this but is probably one go ahead jackie this is last year when she went grand for right. the third time and Lindsay's showing her yeah but for for a breeder you know this was kind of a dream come true for me because and really because of tammy I'll say, she said, I, what, I said, what do you want? She said, I want a halter POA. I want, <laughs> I want a halter one. I said, right. okay, I'll raise you one. <laughs> right. And, and you did it. Yeah. And, and how, how fortunate I was and right. to have, you know, kettle bones and uh, the mare. And it was just, it was a nick, you know. Right. She might have not ever had another one that good. Who knows? I don't know. But this mare is just the breeder's dream. Well, this picture here I sent to my brother, and I said, uh, could you please show this to Dad when you go visit him? You know, he visits my our dad on Sundays, sometimes Saturday and Sundays. And uh, mm -hmm. I said he'd really like to see this, and he goes, holy cow who is this and I, of course i didn't say the corridor side i said oh it's one jackie raised i said it's a kiddo tough granddaughter he's like what did he what did she breed to get that because this picture here is of any photo i've ever seen this shows just the four corners you know the three legs there and the 
just wow. You know, I mean, she looks wider in this picture than any other picture I've seen her of. And, uh, yeah. And, you know, that's a great picture of her, but she's even more impressive in person. Right. Oh, she is. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to see her several times, so. When I, I've only seen her in Tulsa, I think, because I haven't been to the. I probably seen her in Iowa. That last year it was in Iowa. She was probably a yearling. I seen her out there. But like you say, I probably missed her because, first of all, there was a big, tough pen of yearlings, and then she wasn't quite, you know, she was still growing. So. Yeah. Yeah. She wasn't, she wasn't there yet. Right. I'm just flipping through some pictures, Jackie, of the random stuff. People, we don't have to comment on every picture. Now we got Rudy again, the kiddo bounce son. And okay, now oh, this, this this mare coming yeah. up. Go ahead. Go back. Go back to that black and white one. The black and white baby. The black and white baby. That's a locked and loaded baby, and that's a filly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, oh, it says man. black filly side. So. Yeah. Yeah, this it'll catch up. Of- Okay, yeah, this is a locked and loaded filly. Okay. And that's out of a Sunbright Prince daughter. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And this filly's going to be a halter baby, too. <laughs> you might. She might. She might, <laughs> might. be, yeah. Depends on who gets her. Okay, okay, I'll go back through. Then there's a red baby with a white mane or flaxen mane and a red tail. tail. It could be from long ago. I don't know who this is. I don't think so. They were all newer ones. Okay. Me. All right. Oh, It'll... no, this is, this is, uh, this is, uh, rude dude. That's as rude dude as a baby. Yeah. The boy yeah. looks different, doesn't he? The only way you can, the blanket, but the, the tail is, or the mane is yeah. so different. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he was born with that really light mane. Of course, it turns red. But... Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's rude, dude. That's rude, dude. Now, here's one of your more modern ones, of course. They they started taking pictures this way the last couple of years where they're turned, they're twisted, you know, and, and it's cool. Yeah. It's starting to get yeah. a little, you know, they've been doing oh, yeah. it a while. But. They call that a wrap, the wrap around. A wrap, kind of oh, okay. It's See, I'm wrap. learning stuff tonight, yeah. And this is, uh, well, I learned it from Lindsay and Jamie. Okay. This, this is a kid old phone. Philly out of a quarter mare that C.A. Good and I own, and she's with Lindsay right now. She's two this year. This is Miss Touchdown Kid. I remember her. I, th- I told you she's going to be the next one, you know, just because of her pedigree and stuff. She, she, she might. She might, yeah. She yeah. might. She's coming. She's coming. She's coming, <laughs> yeah. You guys are sure helping kiddo bounce with all those great mares so i'm gonna skip by rudy because we've seen him a bunch so there's yeah. gonna be a brood mare coming up here uh that i showed yeah out of a touchdown kid so you got kiddo bounce and touchdown kid the pony kid and the corridor kid it's it's gonna be a good one yeah this is saint avalon this is right. one of the mares that i got from bagwell right yeah yeah and she did well yeah. for Bagwell. I don't know what you ended up getting out of her. She was already getting some age on her, I think, when you had her, wasn't she? Well, she, she had two poles by Kiddo Bounce, and the first one was the the the, the Marco that Mullenbach bought. Okay. Larry Gibson, Larry Gibson actually pulled these both of those poles out of that mare and showed them, and then he sold them. Okay. And, uh, so yeah. Okay. All right. There's another route. I think that's the same filly. Okay, now we got. I think this Lynn is. Puffin, Go ahead. I, I know you're. I know you're moving ahead, but Lynn Puffenbarger, you know, told me he always wanted that St. Avalon mare, and Bagwells would never sell her to him, but I don't know why. I know we then, almost went to their place when we we went because I told him that I thought he could get her. And uh, yeah. we didn't go to her play, but he got like a kid, you know, he was so excited. Jeremy will remember that story. And he just changed, you know, he was already in his eighties then. And he said, yeah. I can't really. And he lo- he wanted that mare. Yeah. Oh, this is okay. dreams. This is dreams this here. Is dreams. Yeah. That's the one that uh, goes back to total treat. Right. And the one I lost. And then goes back to, yeah, it goes back to two fillies that was born on my family's place, one in Minnesota or in Kimball and one in Dassel because her mother's a Candy Ojai kid. So, yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you here's another purple picture. You guys are in a different order here. This is the little mare, right. Kidorable. Right. Yeah. 
Okay, this was one right before uh, locked and loaded. The year he won grand, so this was the year before. This was 14. He was reserve grand, I think. A yearling colt. Oh, yeah, that's Bruno. That's, that's Bruno. Obvious kid. Oh, okay. Yeah, obvious, kid. obvious kid. And he went reserve grand as a yearling, right? He went reserve grand, right? Yeah. And uh, Tom Leake came down and showed him for us because he was such a handful. Okay. And then, then we sent him home with uh, Aaron Brown. Okay. And and uh, she was going to ride him, but I said, if, if he's too much to handle Aaron, you cut him. <laughs> and she said, oh, you will want to cut this pole. I said, Aaron, if he's too much to handle, you cut him. And so he got gelded <laughs> next week down at Aaron's place. Okay. He was a, a handful, but anyway, yeah. He went on to be shown by Mark Menke as a two-year-old, and uh, he did very well. Okay. He won some of the pleasure for Terry. That's cool. And this, this is my baby that I bought from Jessica Drish last year. That's by My Lucky Zipper okay. out of the Kiddo Tough Daughter. Okay. RPRs, what was her name? RPRs. Uh, cover what? Girl? Yeah, Cover Girl. She's yeah. got a Cover Girl okay. by My Lucky Zipper. So she's a yearling this year. Okay. Yeah, I got a big story about Cover Girl, but I won't tell it tonight. But, of course, she was, you know, Kiddo Tough and... I helped yeah. get that one going, but yeah, she's yeah. she's a good broodmare. Well, well, I really like this filly. Yeah, she's going to be a broodmare for me, hopefully, and we'll see what she take, what she has. Right. Okay. I think this might be. Oh yeah, our, one last straw. One last straw. Is that the name That's of it? What her name is. Yeah. yeah, one last straw. Yeah, yeah. RPR's kiddos cover girl. She's the mother to the impulsive kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. She is. Yeah. yeah. And he's going to make is, a... This is Tammy's gelding, the kiddo bones gelding. And this was, a, he's a uh, Silver Bay. He's okay. a Silver Bay. This is Enzo. You have to tell me his registered name. Enzo. Thing. He reminds me in color of, of Zom's yeah. sweetheart kid. You know what I yeah. mean? He's colored a lot like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Z Best Zip Up. That was his name. But he okay. won a lot. Yeah. At he Halter. Did. And then he. You know, he had a career under saddle for a while, and now they sold him because Tammy and Mark Minky, um went together with on him. Okay. All right. He step up. Yeah, okay. Zombie. All the breeders on him. Dean but Damon yeah, just said uh, Jackie has, has had some awesome broodmares, Dean just said, because <laughs> so, he watches the show. Here's Ruthie again. Uh, yep. 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 I know we're getting a little long in time here. I was going to try to end it by 9 o'clock. I'm not rushing you, Jackie, but we got so many pictures to go through. I'm going to skip some of these and uh, let you catch up. I think we're getting down in pictures. Unfortunately, the way I do this slideshow, I can't see when the end's coming, but I usually remember you know, what I have. So we're getting there, people. But uh, we started at 6.30, 6.35, and it's almost 9. But I hope everybody's been enjoying the show. Uh, we're about ready to wrap up. Jackie, you've been a trooper hanging in there. So, uh. Oh, I, I love <laughs> looking at ponies. Right. Anyway, this is uh, the filly that Winchester's Valentine had last year by kissing the girl. Oh, wow. Okay. And Tammy's going to show her this year. We call her Lily. And it's, um, what did Tammy name her? Kiss something. But she's, she's got a gorgeous head, this filly. She does, and yeah. We, Very tight. We were, so, we were shocked when we got a blanket. Right. We were shocked that we didn't get a leopard, but that tells me that she's not uh, homozygous for the PATN1 gene. She's only got one copy. Right. She's a piece of pot. Right. And I actually, I have a lock and loaded daughter. It's four this year, and she's solid colored. She doesn't have the LP gene. Okay. But she's homozygous. She's homozygous for the PATN1 gene. Wow. You really, so you really took off learning all that stuff, Jackie, because when you learned yeah. about breeding POAs, they didn't have all that. So, uh, no, they didn't have no. any of that. Right. So. This is uh, loving every minute. Loving every Tammy minute. Tammy just yeah. put that in it. Yeah. So that's a good name and that's a good feel. I love that quarter horse eye there. You know, that popping eye is just so beautiful. Yeah. So 
Oh, here's a special picture. Here's you and Tammy and CA and Larry at the uh, 13 International Futurity. So these are all kiddo bounces, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, these yeah. are all kiddo bounces. That was our first. No, that no, that wasn't a get a sire but picture, but that's all kiddo bounces. Right. Yeah. Well, they don't have a get a sire class at the Futurity, do they? I don't think they do. Oh. No, but you no. they should. <laughs> but it'd be all babies. It'd be a mess. Yeah. The one that Larry Gibson has is out of that Saint Avalon there. Okay. And then the one, the one that CA is holding, um, that was a filly. That's uh, heavenly. <laughs> we we still have her. her name is Faith. Okay. Um, and then Simply that's Bruno heavenly. on the that's Simply Heavenly, beautiful. okay. Bruno on the end, yeah. Well, that's a good picture there. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's here's the Get a lot. Sire. Here's a real Get a Sire picture here. So <laughs> this is at the National Congress, and you guys won, won this, I'm sure. Yeah, this, yeah. Was, the, this was one we won two years ago because that's, Christine Keller's yearling gelding, and he won yearling gelding. Okay. At Congress, and then Tammy's with uh, Z Better Zip Up, and he won three-year-old gelding. Right. And then of course Opal, and, and that was her. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, somebody so said earlier, Faith was that middle one named Faith. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, last year I cost you a win, and maybe because you said, I'm going to Kent's party. <laughs> you, 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 I felt oh, I so won. bad. A... <laughs> oh, I wanted to be at your party. Yeah, well, like that, that was special. I'm glad you did. So a lot of special people came to that. Well, not a lot of people, but it was at midnight, so it wasn't quite that late. But it was. We, my oh, wife set all that up because she thought it was very special, you know. And, uh, it so, was. And, and, of course, with the circumstances with COVID and stuff, we couldn't have it at a banquet situation. So she she did all that on her own. So uh, she made it special. It. And a lot of yeah. my close POA friends got to, to go to it. So, so it was and cool. And Kiddo Bounce has won Get a Sire three times now. It's three times. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so we, ha we haven't shown an uh, entry every year, but every year that we've shown, we've won. Okay. Wow. I'll say that. Oh, that's cool. that, yeah, this is on the left is Jenna Despinez, and she's holding JBJ's presidential zipper. I remember he him a, when he was born. Wasn't yeah. he born sickly or early or something? He was out of a My Lucky Zipper daughter called okay. Fat, JBJ's Fat, fat Bottom, bottom girl. girl. Yeah. And this was the first fall, and he was up to the clinic to get rebred. And the vet had an accident and punctured her colon. Oh, wow. And she died. Right. I remember that. She was a nice mare, fat bottom girl for sure. Yeah. yeah. Another few spot. Yeah. Zipper daughter. Zippy daughter yeah. that I thought I, that it didn't work out. But I still love my vet up there. Right. And uh, that's where uh, Kidorable and her, her colt by Intuit are right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. That's what I'm going to end with. So, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I got a couple more here. Some of these we've went through before. So, uh, and then maybe here, I'm trying to figure out if that's locked and loaded. I think it was. I think it is. Okay. There's Bruno. Uh, all you, right. You, you went by my sorrel filly. Yeah, I went by her. I'm sorry. I, I'm on my daddy's loaded now. So I cheated on yeah. that one. I got the name up on the top. And that's uh, her, that's a yearling photo. That's when she was at Courtney Lieback. Okay. Security. Who's this one now? I don't know who this is at all. When she say the name, I will. But well, it looks like Katie, Leanne, and Leo's granddaughter. Right. Looks I don't like know Katie why that one's in here, but I don't. Know. That's an impulse. Yeah, you sent it. It was in a group, but maybe it just slipped in. So, okay, yeah. this is Tracy's mare now, and she she uh, bought ready to foal. Of course, she was grooming her to get ready to to foal, and she's had good luck with her. She's a lucky zipper daughter, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that was Katie. That, my... 
this is this is uh, Tracy's mirror right here. The right here, yeah. I skipped to the her. One, the one before that is a yearling photo of JBJ's chocolate zipper's mother. Okay. She was a Should we go she back to also, her? She's a few yeah. spot too? Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. chocolate zipper. She's got a mane on her. She's got a big mane. Jackie, you still there? I think I just lost Jackie. Okay, let me call Jackie back. We've been talking a long time, so I'm going to call her right back. Welcome we're, to the U.S. Cellular oh. Voice. <laughs> we're about ready to wrap up the show, everybody, because it is uh, 858. If you're listening, Jackie, if you turned your sound back on, I am going to call Welcome you back. Welcome to the U.S. If I can, or you can call me back. Uh, so this is a good time for Tracy to chime in because this is her mare, and she basically threatened me and said I had to have her on here. No, I was going to anyway because she is a JBJ's mare, and Tracy's done well with her like a lot of people do that buy uh, the JBJ's and use them for breeding or for showing. And, uh, of course, this is one of that mare's foals, that one for Tracy, one the Futurity. She's had two Futurity champions now. Yeah, I warned her to charge her phone, so hopefully she did, because I charged mine at 2 o'clock today. It was at 50%, and I charged it so it was at 100%, because I knew this was going to happen. But uh, I'll keep trying to call her here before we end the show. So I did not. Tracy said, you didn't threaten me. You never threatened me. But, of course, Tracy's been having some great babies out of that few spot mare. And, uh, of course, this is one of them right here. As a yearling, I took this photo. I'm proud of this photo, even though she don't have her ears all the way up. She's a future superstar in the breed, already a champion as a baby and a yearling from Tracy's program out of one of Jackie's mares. Here's another uh, POA, little stallion that's out of by one of Jackie's uh, stallions. His sire is JBJ's uh, looking bright-eyed, I believe, uh, Dave Brewer's stallion. And this guy's out in uh, with Katie out in Oregon. He's a cool little guy. I believe they call him Frodo, I think, uh, looking to be epic. Like I say, he's he's real cool. And uh, yeah, Jack, uh, Tracy had TC touched by a widow on there. And of course, they're both by TC uh, Impulsive Widow, her young stallion. I'm going to try to call you one more time here, Jackie. Hopefully. Welcome to the U.S. Cellular Voice. No, her phone might have died, so that's unfortunate. But we had a long, over two-hour talk with Jackie. So uh, this is her current stallion, one of her current stallions here that was grand. This is him in his everyday street clothes. Of course, this is JBJ's locked and loaded. Here he is, a profile picture of him. Half-quarter horse. Like I say, grand champion stallion. He's one of her sires now. And she's using this stallion, too. This is Valentino. We've seen him all night, it seems like. Kedorable. When you win a lot, you get a lot of champion photos to show. So, uh, Okay, so this is the young, famous stallion uh, that Bradshaw's just purchased a while back into it. And Jackie bred a POA mare to him. Of course, she bred this mare to him. And she got a few spot baby this year that I think everybody's going to hear about. So, uh, you know, that's pretty cool. She took a chance and bred to a, a halter stallion like this, which she's done that before and had good results. So, and she got nice color and uh, a nice baby. So uh, I'm just checking. I'm going to do one more time, everybody. I'm calling one more time, Jackie, to see if I can get a hold of you. If not, that was fine. We had a great conversation. Oh, it's ringing. Hi, I lost you. <laughs> we all know that, but that's fine. We didn't go to bed. <laughs> We're still here. Uh, my wife okay. keeps sending me messages. Watch your time. Watch your time. She's my producer at home. So uh, okay. I'm about ready to wrap up, but uh, you didn't miss much. Just a couple photos that we'd already seen. But right now is into it is pictured here. And of course, oh. I'm, a, you know, you're the, are you the first POA person to breed to him? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to put him on everything I can, you know, to use his image. He's such a beautiful animal. And uh, tell us what you got by him this year. Okay, so um, I got a few spot stud out of him. 
Of course, of course, it's a few spots, and uh, because what else do I get? I, and I told Tammy a couple of weeks before he was born, we had met um, and swapped some horses and dogs around anyway. <laughs> and I said to her, we had lunch, and I said to her, I said, Tammy, now you know this could be, I told her it was a cold. I knew it was going to be a cold. Right. And I said, Tammy. This could be our cue spot. And she got this look on her face, and she said, oh, I guess it could. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, sure enough, that's what she had was a few spot said cold. Right. He's, he's little. Now, I haven't seen him yet either. I've only seen pictures that I, the vet has sent me, but he was 30 inches at birth. Wow. So, so he's he going to be 50 and under. He'll be 50 probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but he's small. Which, small. you know, um, the first one, that Teddy, he was about that size, too, the one by kissing the girl. Okay. So size was not a problem. You know, breeding that into it, horse to mm. adorable, was 15 and a half inches. No problems, no issues. Right. And uh, the baby's small. So Small. And you got this genetics in that small few spot now. You could have hit the lottery there. So. Well, you, I don't know, but we're... You, we're, you never know, but... We bred her back the same way, so we'll see what we get next year. Oh, wow. You might get yeah. a wild-colored filly next year. You never know what you'll get. You know? Oh, please. I'm hoping, yeah. <laughs> if you could get those big spots like he's got on a filly, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 If, I live long, if I live long enough, because like, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. You're not done yet. You're done. still a young oh. lady. Teddy yeah. was 28 inches. I don't know if that's Tammy that said that. but so, Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Teddy was 28 inches, so that usually equals 48 inches. So, I mean, I, yeah. I figured that out a long time ago. Doc always argued with me with that. He said, well, that was back in the when you guys were breeding the old ponies, you know. He said, and I figured it out after we were breeding the horses. You know, I didn't yeah. figure it out in the 70s or 80s. I wasn't around then, not in the 70s anyway. So I, it don't matter if the stud's this tall or not. I usually do that rule of thumb, the, the add 20 yeah. to it. It's pretty close. And, uh, of course, Dad always looked at the cannon bones. He didn't tape them or anything, but he could. Right. He, he would be flying down the road in his Ram truck and six-horse trailer and pull into a driveway because he's seen a 14-hand mare, you know, going 50 <laughs> miles an hour. He did that as good as anybody. He could spot short mares or short horses. Sometimes they'd be a gilding, and then he'd have to back out and be mad. But, yeah, yeah. He, he discovered stuff for other people that way, too. So, uh, Oh, that's that's a great story. So, well, I'm about so, ready to wrap up, Jackie. Here's a picture of you receiving a plaque in Cannon Falls. I thought it was just a good picture, so you're shaking. That was Bill, with Bill and Susie Coulter, you know, um, and he, he owns Super Sun. Right. Well, this actually, one's with Larry Koss, but you got the other oh, one. Oh, with Larry Koss. Yeah, oh, yeah there's two great. of them, yeah. So I don't know if I got the one with Coulter in here. We'll see. No, that yeah, one was, didn't make the cut, unfortunately, but uh, I did okay. have the one there. And then, of course, I have to end with Opal because she's the, you know, she's, she's the queen, she's she's the the queen, queen. of the chapter. Yeah, she's the, the goddess or the heroine or heroine or whatever of the chapter. So, uh, thank, thank you. Ken, I want to thank you so much for having me tonight. This was great fun. <laughs> well, I'm glad, you, I'm glad I could honor you this way. You deserve to be honored in POH for what you've done as a breeder and a promoter. You're one of the best promoters there's been, too. And uh, that's why JBJ's is out there so well. But you keep, just like now, you could have sat on your laurels and you didn't have to breed to, into it. You know, and you did. And look at what happened. Yeah. You might, that horse, I might be talking about him 20 years from now. You know, you might. I don't know. We don't know. You never know. But, uh, you know, and you got other crosses coming, too. So, uh, yeah. Well, again, I want to thank Tammy for being a part of the show and you especially for giving, you know, two or three hours. This is one of our longest podcasts. Tracy's going, keep showing more. Keep showing more. <laughs> so. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Well, Thanks for getting back on the phone because I wanted to end it that way. So I'm glad you're here with me at the end. So, all yeah. right. Well, I'll see you in, uh, you're going to be in Tulsa this year? You betcha. You betcha. I'll be, I'll be there. <laughs> right. The people in Oklahoma make fun of me when I say, oh, yeah. I say, oh, yeah. And they go, you're from up there, from Minnesota. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they say I got an accent, too. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. All right, great Jackie. Talking to you. Great talking bye to you. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. 
All right, everybody, I really enjoyed this show tonight. Two great guests. Unfortunately, we couldn't talk to Tammy too long because, like she said, she wanted to, to be all about Jackie. So uh, Jackie's dedicated basically her whole adult life to raising these beautiful POAs, and she's done a great job. She's one of the best breeders of all time, and uh, she started out as a young lady doing it, and she's still continuing to do it this day. So, again, this is just a snapshot of her program. Of course, we didn't show everything. I could have a show just on the mares uh, that she used. I wrote down a whole bunch of mares, but I'm not going to read them now, and, uh, and all the stallions that she had something to do with, but I think that's for another time. I, I think the show went well, Tracy said, uh, best show so far. So I, I like that, Tracy. What a great history of Jackie and JBJs. Well, thank you, everybody, for the kind remarks. That's why I keep doing this, because people seem to like it. Uh, last week's episode, Ashley shared it a little bit, and we're up to like six, 700 views. So that's good. Monica just said, see you in Tulsa. Uh, Jackie, Monica, some, I think Tammy said that Opal liked your cookies, or somebody said that, so it might have been Lindsay. But I think some of your cookies got ate by... Uh, POAs instead of by humans at the Tulsa show. So, uh, all right, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'm going to try to be back next week uh, talking about Leonard Lewis. I might have to take a week off after tonight, but uh, yeah, this was a great show, but we'll see. I'll try. I try to do every Tuesday if I can. So, again, thanks a lot for my guests, Tammy and Jackie. They were both uh, terrific. And thanks for all the viewers. Remember to tell people about this show. If they don't know about it, they don't get to enjoy it. So spread the word about the POA History Group and uh, my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the song. Mm -hmm.